transformation is in the works. You cannot halt the death card. There will be a shedding of the skin. There will be a transformation. Hi, Aries. Welcome to your love reading for November 2020. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Amanda. I'm at Luna Sync Tarot. If this is your first time to this channel, thank you so much for coming around. If this reading resonates with you, hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. If you are returning to this channel to, to watch another reading, I thank you. I thank you for your support. If you are so called, please leave a comment below. I love commenting or interacting with you. I love hearing how this reading applies to your life situation. Um, and I also just like chatting with you all. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. It's kind of fun. Um, I have shuffled your cards off screen and I'm doing a, a last shuffle here. So in this reading, we're going to look at you and what you bring to the table. We'll look at your connection and what they're bringing to the table. We'll look at what happens when the two of you come together, your composite energies. We'll look at the insight for the connection. <clears throat> we'll pull clarifying cards all the way through. And we will also pull at least one or two uh, prescriptive advice cards. So advice for you as you move through this connection in November. If you're interested in a personal reading with me, there is a link below. I'm doing those now. I'd love to read for you. All right. Well, I think that's pretty good. Let's sync up. I'm going to split the deck three ways. And here we go. You ready? In the position of you. Ooh. And what you're bringing to the table, we have the Ten of Swords. You know, uh, this card is pretty clear. There's been an ending of some sort. Completion, finality. That's what you're bringing to the table in November. In the position of your connection, we have the Seven of Wands. Feeling very defensive, very guarded. Um, standing up to meet a challenge, but meeting it in a very defensive way. Could be there's some conflict between the two of you here in November. In the position of the com composite energies, we have the chariot moving forward, aligning opposing forces and moving forward. This could mean that the two of you come together and figure it out and then move forward. Or it could be that you move forward away from one another, right? Just moving beyond the connection. Let's see. We will clarify. In the position of the insight, we have the Ace of Swords, a new beginning, a new idea, a new thought, a new way of thinking, a new perspective. There is some sort of new beginning. Truth. The truth. The truth comes out. That's the insight. Let's clarify. I want to work. I'm going to keep working with this deck. In the position of you, we have the Ten of Swords. What is this about? What is this Ten of Swords energy? We know it's about a completion. We know it's about something being over. And it's like, dude, there is no wiggling around this ending. You got Ten Swords in your back. It's over and done. After a long period of struggle and strife, There is defensiveness, skepticism, criticalness, um, really looking critically and skeptically at something. This person is wounded. They have a bandage around their head. They've been through it. They've been through it. Some sort of hardship. And now you're just like, I am having a real hard time trusting. Real hard time trusting. <clears throat> look at them they are having a hard time trusting too very defended very guarded more about the seven of wands energy in the position of your connection aries connection the person that they're thinking about or connecting with in november let's clarify the seven of wands for you aries when the two of you come together, there is a moving forward. Confidence. Confidently moving forward. Justice. 
they want justice. They want the truth. Look, this came out in the insight. Some truth is revealed. Some truth comes forward. Look at the justice card, this emperor, this king holding the one sword of truth, balancing the scales. This is karmic justice served. This is clarifying your connection in November. Somebody needs the truth. Somebody needs to be served their justice. I don't know if that's you or them or, or the situation in general. Where are, so comp composite energies, when the two of you come together, we've got the chariot. Oh boy, good Lord. <clears throat> Somebody's holding on, holding on tight. Stubbornness. Conservatives, conservatism, conser conservatism, conservative. Just conserving, holding on, holding on tight, not wanting to let go. Retracting, retracting into yourself. There is a transformation that's happening. Something is over. Something is way over, dude. Look at that. And there's this moving forward energy with the chariot, but there's also this holding on energy like, no, mm, mm. when you move forward, you expand. When you hold on, you retract. So there's this retraction and expansion, a play on expansion and retraction. Transformation is in the works. You cannot halt the death card. There will be a shedding of the skin. There will be a transformation. Page of Swords. Impulsivity rash. Somebody saying something that hurts. Um, observing, researching, watching. This is the stalker card. Really watching somebody, watching a situation unfold. Okay. Five of Wands. We have all the, the Wands cards here. Not all of them, but many of them that speak to struggle, strife, competition, um, guardedness, defensiveness, proving oneself. Yeah, whoa, okay. Let's look at this. All these cards came out to clarify the chariot. Somebody wants to move forward. Something wants to move forward. There is a transformation happening. This is in your combined energies. You can't avoid it. You can't stall it. And if you try, it's going to hurt even more. This holding on, this retraction energy in the face of an expansion energy. Somebody who's watching, observing, watching your social media accounts, watching you very closely, or vice versa, you watching them very closely. Again, it's a sword. It's the truth. What is the truth here? There's some truth that needs to be exposed and some justice around this truth. There's fighting, competition, testing, testing energy. Whoa. Okay, we got to figure out what the truth is. <clears throat> Ace of Swords in the Insight. What is this truth? Let's use the Osho Zen. What is this truth that needs to be revealed? Past lives has to do with something that happened in the past. Maybe in multiple past lives. This could be a past life connection. A past life experience. This could be an old dynamic that played has played out in your life over and over and over and over again. And you just need to get down to the bottom of it. What is the truth of that? So that you can resolve it, let it go, move on. Transform it once and for all. Some sort of justice around that. Tell us more about this truth. What does this truth have to do with? What does Aries need to know about this truth, this insight? This connection is bringing about this. 
It's like you played this dynamic out in this connection once again. Once again. <clears throat> an old dynamic, an old karmic dynamic that has an opportunity to come to an end. Ooh, understanding. Yeah. It is time to unpack this and to understand what this is all about, to understand this dynamic, the truth of this situation, so that you can leave this cage and fly free. Freedom. Whoa. More about this truth, please, for Aries. What is the nature of this truth? Aloneness. Then I asked, what is the nature of this truth? I asked for more about this truth and the nature of this truth. This could signify a fear of being alone or a need to be alone. This feels like a card of advice to me. Go with the flow at this moment. This is, you know, I really do get a sense that all of this is playing out your involvement is important in, in what is transpiring, absolutely. But it's faded. It's like it's going to happen with or without you. You can retract. You can hold on. You can refuse to engage. It's going to happen anyway. And it's if you, if you um, adopt that stance, it'll be more difficult, right? It'll be more challenging. Going with the flow. This is going to happen anyway. This is in the works. Adopt a stance of receptivity and openness go with the flow. There might be a period of aloneness, the hermit. Going within, you know, hermit energy is all about creating that container of solitude and silence around you so that you can find that inner light and then pull it out and use it. Usually the hermit is holding a lamp. Use it to guide your way forward the information, the knowledge is inside of you. And it's the hermit is a cultivation energy, like cultivating that inner wisdom. And what do you need to do that? You need a period of aloneness and solitude. Past lives, past life situation came up to clarify the truth of the situation. Ooh, let's pull a card of advice for you. I'm going to pull a goddess card. For you, my dear Aries, November 2020, as you move through this connection in November. Card of, of advice for Aries, please. Oh, prosperity. Look at that. The universe is pouring its abundance out to you. Be open to receiving. Oh yeah, what are we talking about? This openness, adopting a stance of openness and receptivity. This seems pretty intense, this time right now. It might be hard for you <laughs> to adopt that stance with all of this transformation, death, final completion energy happening here. There's a lot of guardedness. There's a lot of mistrust skepticism. It might be a, quite a challenge to adopt this stance, but the universe is saying, hey, we're sending abundance your way and you need to be open to receive it. So please open, go with the flow, adopt a stance of receptivity. Let's read about this card. Where did I put my book? Oh, there it is. Okay. Aries, if this reading is resonating with you, please hit the like button so that other people can see the reading. I'll take a sip of tea. Throat is really dry today. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear how this, uh, this is playing out for you. Okay. Asking for help is a sign of strength, not weakness. You are very powerful and I'm here to support your growing power. It's right for you to receive this help as we function as a team. I've heard your prayers, worries, and affirmations. I'm pouring my cornucopia of prosperity upon you now, so expect unforeseen windfalls and gifts. Notice the new ideas, feelings, and visions within you. This guidance gives you clear direction about actions to take in conjunction with my assistance. Together, we're unstoppable. Okay, that's beautiful. 
So, <clears throat> you know, sometimes I forget to ask for help until things become really bad and I am having sleepless nights and I'm just really emotionally struggling. And it's at that point where I remember to ask for help. But this is a call for you to ask for help all the way through because um, it is quite possible that, that your guides cannot help you until you open up to receive the help, until you ask for that, their help. So this is a call for you to ask for their help and to ask for help in general. It's a sign of strength, not weakness. Also, what did they say? They said something about that reminded me of this Ace of Swords energy. Let's go back one more time. What did this book say? Notice the new ideas, feelings, and visions. This is all about a new, new beginning, a brand new idea. New thoughts, new perspectives, new visions. It's the air, element of air. So the truth. Notice new ideas, feelings, and visions within you. We got that hermit energy that came out to clarify the truth. So in order to notice these things, you will need to create a container of solitude in order to go within, pull out that light, pull out that truth, and hold it up to guide you forward as you move forward. Aries, I'm wishing you the best in November. Hope you take good care. Hey there. Welcome to this reading. This reading is for Taurus for November 2020. It's a love reading. So if you are thinking about someone, you're involved with someone, or you just want to learn a little bit more about a connection that has intrigued you, this is your reading. Thank you. Welcome. My name's Amanda. I'm at Lunasync Tarot. I've been shuffling your cards for a while, so I'm going to give it a, a last shuffle here. If you're new to uh, my channel, welcome. Thank you for joining it. us, me, us, all of us here. If you are returning, thank you for coming back. Welcome back. If you are so inspired, please leave a message below. I love uh, communicating with you. I love talking with you. I love your comments. Also, consider subscribing to my channel. And if this reading resonates with you, hit the like button. That really helps the, the reading to get seen by other people and uh, helps my channel a lot. Thank you. All right. Let's get into this Taurus love November 2020. Let's see what is up with you in the way of love, relationship, intimacy. All right. What you're contributing is a page of swords energy. So an energy of watching, observing, researching. You may be really paying close attention to your love interest at this time, really observing what they're all about. And the position of them and what they're bringing to the table is a brand new beginning. It's the Ace of Swords. This is a new way of thinking. It's a new idea. It's a new perspective. Um, swords have everything to do with thoughts. Um, and of course, they're connected to the emotions as well because our thoughts influence our emotions. But it's like a new beginning of some sort. And I see that you're holding a single sword and a single sword came up for them. So it could be that you're connected to this new way of thinking, this new idea somehow. This new idea is connecting the two of you in November. The uh, composite energies is the, the Queen of Cups. Hmm. Again, she is really studying this thing, holding a single thing so this is why I'm seeing the commonalities between the cards right now. Look how he's holding the sword. This hand is holding the sword. She's holding this cup. So hold, like really researching, observing, paying very close, thoughtful attention to something, some idea. Like I said, the thoughts are connected to the emotions very uh, intrinsically. So emotionally involved with this thing holding it very close. It's like, I heard the word precious. I don't say that word very often. It's like precious to you. This connection, this communication, this thought, this idea, very, very precious to you. 
composite energies. Like you both share this sort of fascination. Uh, I want to use the word obsession, but that's not quite right. Um, it could be just right for the moment. Uh, really just engaged, involved with this thing. Look at how she is just holding it and studying it. And that's your composite energy. And then, oh, wow, interesting. This could be like a faded match. You have met your match. We have the king and the queen of cups showing up here together. This is the insight. Emotional maturity, compassion, empathy. Uh, the king of cups, this is a personality that is, uh, it's possible for them to be in very emotionally turbulent times and really just maintain their shit, right? They know how to contain their emotions. They know how to hold their emotions. Um, a safe container for an emotional experience. It could be that they just see you or you see them. There's this energy of really witnessing the other person and feeling very emotionally matched. Very much emotionally on the same page. Queen of Cups, King of Cups. King of Cups in the position of the insight. Could be that you're realizing this is the type of person that you want and need in your life. Whoever this is, they are emotionally mature and they're able to bring it. They're able to meet you there. Beautiful. All right. Let's dig in a little bit deeper here with the Tarot of Sexual Magic. I really enjoy this deck because the imagery is different and just allows for uh, different symbolism and meanings to come up in the reading. How do you feel about this connection in November? What are your feelings about this person? Ooh. Okay, King of Cups. You do see them as the King of Cups and that is exactly what you want in your life right now. King of Cups, emotional maturity, just... Uh, it's such a beautiful energy. It's an energy of being able to give, give compassion, um, very uh, empathetic, um, just holding, holding, holding the space for you emotionally, able to see you, loving the way that you are, loving your emotions, wanting to know more about you emotionally and your emotional life. It's the king. Oh, look at the way he's caressing her hair. Just really, really present with you emotionally. Beautiful. That's how you see them. That's how you see this connection or that is what you want. That is like, that's the connection for me. Let's see how they see you. They have the Ace of Swords, like a new idea, right? A new way of thinking, a new perspective in the position of them and what they're contributing. How do they see you? How do they see this connection in November 2020? King of Cups. Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups is composite energy. What happens when the two of you come together? Really looking at your emotions. Observing. Becoming aware. The Queen of Cups is looking down at the chalice. King of Cups is holding the chalice and looking out. Okay. How do they see you? Here we go. King of Swords. Whoa. We have two, we have three kings that have showed up here. So first of all, you see them as the King of Cups. They see you as the King of Swords. So this is a matching of energy um, levels a leveling up, a matching of the, like a status match, right? You're both kings. You're both seeing each other in this king-like energy. Now, the king of swords in this imagery, we're going to talk about the traditional meaning of the king of swords. Um, but in this imagery, the king of swords is a little detached. Attached from their heart or detached from their heart. Did I say attached? maybe attached to their thoughts, detached from their heart. I get the sense that this relationship that they have, this man and this woman, the king and this maiden, is very unequal. And it's all to serve the king of swords. 
and then there's somebody observing them. Maybe it's the wife of the king or a chambermaid, but they are being observed. She looks like a queen of some sort because she has a crown on her head, the woman outside of the window. So there's a, a, a de, there's sort of a, man, what is it, a manipulation? There's a distortion of a, a relationship here. Like he's acting outside of the relationship with this woman here. And there's an unequal relationship happening between these two. An abuse of power. And this is how they're seeing the relationship with you in November 2020. Or they see you. Now, if that doesn't apply, if you're like, what? Whatever, that doesn't fit with me. The traditional meaning of the King of Swords is somebody who's very analytical, very logical, can be a little bit removed from their emotions as a result of this sort of inclination to, to live up here, to, to really um, control things from a very mental, analytical, logical perspective. They have the Ace of Swords, so they're in that swords energy that's what they're contributing and maybe they're projecting some of that onto you but you also have the page of swords we have a lot of swords going on here we have two swords no uh, three swords cards and three cups cards this is a dynamic dual this is like the duality of the heart and the mind right now some sort of challenge or opposition between the heart and the mind happening in November 2020 inside of this connection. They're both looking out from each other. Is, can I, how does this work? Uh, yeah, like this. Look, he's looking that way, she's looking that way. There's some sort of disconnection. I don't know if it's necessarily a super negative thing, but um, Emotionally, I get the sense that you're not quite seeing eye to eye. I know what it is that you want. You want this emotionally stable, receptive, compassionate, empathic connection. King of Swords and the Ace of Swords showed up over here for, for the, your partner in November, and it's a disconnection between your heart and your mind. And they're, I don't know if this is the way that they're seeing you or this is the way they're coming at you, the way they're approaching you, the way they're thinking about this connection, thinking about you from this very king of swords energy, detached from the heart, very logical, very analytical. Sometimes this represents a person who's in the military or the legal profession. Let's learn more. What is this uh, composite energy? When the two of you come together, we get the Queen of Cups. Let's learn a little bit more. Let's clarify the Queen of Cups. This is the blending of your energy. What happens when the two of you come together? Taurus, November 2020. Love, relationship, and intimacy. If this reading is resonating with you, please do hit the like button. It helps the reading to circulate amongst others. And I really do appreciate your support. All right, we got two cards. <clears throat> this is to clarify the composite energies. What happens when the two of you come together? We have a six and a seven. A progression of some sort. Six of wands. <clears throat> Sorry. Sometimes I just get lost in this imagery. The six and the seven. He's really, there's an energy here of somebody who's really enticed by the other and enticed by a specific thing. There's something about one or the other that's very um, enticing. In this picture, it's the booty, but it could be anything. It could be something, you know, just like, again, we were talking about sort of this obsession with this thing, right? This engagement, like this they're enthralled with this one thing. There's a lot of one things, the one sword, the one cup, and they're all observing it, researching it, um, focusing on it. And so in this picture, we do see sort of an a obsession or an enticement with this one thing like, oh, that's very intriguing. Six is the number of achievement and victory. 
It feels good. It's like catching the wave. It's like being seen, right? This is composite energies. What happens when the two of you come together? Again, Queen of Cups really looking at this thing, studying this thing. He's like, yes, that, there's that thing. Give that to me. And then finally, we have the Seven of Pentacles. I don't know. I wonder if the, when the two of you come together, it's just like a... I'm hearing the word like slovenly fest. Like, um, that's not right, though. That sounds weird. It's like um, you check out together. It's like complete and total indulgence. Look, there's this wine glass that's tipped over here. Um, there's candles that are tipped over either you when you get together, you have like a big fuck fest, essentially, like it's just set all like the, like the sex is on and you exhaust one another or you get together and you just party hard. Um, and that's the connection, right? There's some, some, that's how you connect with one another. That's the composite energies there. You know, both of them are a little bit checked out here checked out, not quite connected to present reality, definitely not alert, like on the, in the liminal space, like on the verge of sleep. Um, but also they look intoxicated straight up. They look intoxicated. Okay. Um, let's learn a little bit more. This insight with the King of Cups, King of Cups, so King of Cups came up for you and how you perceive them, how you perceive this connection. And then the King of Cups came up in the insight as well. So there's something that this energy is, is present or it's something that you're wanting. Six of Cups, past love, past relationship, um, soulmate twin flame connection. Six of Cups, we have another six here. Could be that uh, this person, the insight, and also the person that you want or the person that you perceive in November 2020 is somebody from the past. There is a disconnect here. It's like the thing that you want is not really a reality. It's not what it's not what they are. They, they are the king of swords and you want, you're seeing them as the king of cups, but they are the king of swords. Or they think they are the king of swords. They're not, they're not quite attached or feeling connected to their emotions. Not coming from that place. A lot of swords energy happening here. Clarify again the king of cups. King of cups. Let's take a closer look at this King of Cups energy. <clears throat> the insight. My hands are all fumbly. Judgment. There's going to be some sort of awakening here for you. I really do get the sense that this per you thought this person was one thing. You thought this person was the King of Cups. They're not the King of Cups. They're the King of Swords. <laughs> you really want them to be the king of cups, but they're not. So there's an awakening. You know, this horn sounds and you're like, whoa, wait, what was that? Right? And you wake up. You wake up to the fact that the thing that you wanted, you maybe just projected onto this connection. And you're realizing that they are not it. They are not that. They are something else. Yeah, there's a lot of observation, a lot of thoughtfulness, a lot of research, like really looking at, observing this person at, in November. And I, I get the sense that you're going to wake up to who they truly are. And it might not be the thing that you wanted or the thing that you need. Let's pull a card of guidance for you. Taurus, November 2020. All right. Hold on, let's keep going. Yeah, Taurus, let me know. Let me know how this is playing out for you in November. This King of Cups, King of Swords energy. Who is who? Which is which? 
Is it the King of Cups that you want? What is the Six of Wands? You know, like, what is it that you guys are both attracted to? Like, what is that one specific thing that is so intriguing that connects you? What is that thing, Taurus? Tell me. Okay, so what we're looking for here now is uh, some card of advice or guidance that will help you navigate this connection in November. <clears throat> help you to learn a little bit more, like glean some insight about what's happening here so that you can navigate this with grace. I don't know about for you, but November seems to be a pretty intense, powerful month for a lot of people. Ooh, Fox. Okay, yes. This is using your keen powers of observation. Taurus. You're paying very close attention in November. You're observing something very, very closely. Fox, 25, five plus two is seven. That's the number of progression. We have progression here with the six and the seven. Something is progressing in November. Some insight will be had in November. There's definitely a energy of observation, research, camouflage. <laughs> okay if fox has chosen to share its medicine with you it's a sign that you are about to become like the wind which is unseen yet is able to weave into and through any location or situation you would be wise to observe the acts of others rather than their words at this time okay yeah yeah What's more important, what somebody says or what somebody does? Pay attention to what somebody does. Use your cunning nature in a positive way. Keep silent about who and what and why you are observing. In learning the art of camouflage, you need to test your abilities to pull this off. Wow, okay, so Fox is all about stepping outside of your emotions. And putting on the, your witnessing goggles, right? You're just witnessing what's happening. You're witnessing what they're doing. You're watching how they act. Yes, you're hearing what they say. But more importantly, you're observing how they put those words into action. Are their intentions aligned with their action? That's the most important thing. What are they doing? And I do get a sense that something's going to come to light here. And you're going to realize that the thing that you wanted is not the thing that you have. You want a king of cups. You want somebody to meet you emotionally, to take care of you emotionally. Through good times and through bad, right? You have uh, really difficult times. You want them to be able to hold the space there emotionally. You want them to be present and aware and connected. You have good times. You want them to be present with those as well, right? This person, I don't get a sense, is able to be present with their emotions. They check out, and then you check out with them. And that's not the energy that you need or want in your life right now. Presence. There's some sort of just fascination with something about you or about this connection that is the thing that this connection pivots around. It's like the only thing. You know, it's not... It's not very deep. It's kind of on the surface. It's a little bit superficial, this connection, this thing that connects. All right, so Taurus, that's pretty clear. There's something that you need to observe. Um, there's something that you need to pay attention to. There's some insight that will be gleaned in November 2020 about your relationship. Uh, wishing you the best in November. If this reading resonated, please hit the like button, comment. I'm really curious about this. I'd love to talk with you. Um, connect with you around this and get some feedback. And then, uh, yeah, also feel free to subscribe to my channel. Take good care. Wish you the best in November. Gemini, hi. Welcome to your love reading for November 2020. Thank you for joining me. My name's Amanda. I'm at Lunacy Tarot. So this is for you if you are thinking about somebody, thinking about a connection, a love connection in a relationship, or just want to learn a little bit more about the person 
that you are involved with or potentially involved with in November 2020. I've shuffled your cards off camera, so I'm going to give it a, a last shuffle and then we will get started. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to split the deck three ways and let's get into this. Let's sync up. All right, in the position of you and what you're contributing is the five of wands. Conflict, change, competition, conflicted. In the position of them and what they are contributing is the King of Wands. Ooh, the King of Wands is uh, at the top of their game, on point, um, a leader, very, very adept at gathering their network in order to execute a task, right? So very fiery, very passionate, very creative. Um, and in a position of authority, leadership, passionate. Did I say that? <laughs> okay, let's move on. Composite energies, the seven of wands, guarded. Yeah, guarding, defended. In the position of the insight is the queen of cups. Coming from a place of the heart, very connected to emotions, nurturing, this is like a mother type figure. This is the insight, possibly what is needed. The connection with your emotions, connection with your heart. This relationship connection needs uh, to be connected with some sort of emotional state, needs an emotional connection. <clears throat> okay, let's clarify. Alrighty, so... Um, in the position of you, we have the five of wands. What we see here in this card are five figures. They all have wands, so they all have something to that they're bringing to the competition. And they're sort of testing one another. It's like a testing energy. It's like a competitive testing energy. So how is it that you are viewing this connection in November? Let's clarify with the, the tarot of sexual magic here. How are you viewing this connection in November? Ooh, the High Priestess. So there's, I, I get the sense that there is a, hmm, a withdrawal, a turning within, a quiet, a silence. It could be that you're not communicating with your connection at this moment. The King of Wands is looking directly at the Five of Wands. Like, like just, it's almost like, sorry, I'm going to deviate here because I just got my attention drawn to the fact that this is you and this is them. It's almost as if the King of Wands is judging this competition, really observing what's happening here and is kind of sitting afar or sitting at a distance and watching and judging. Like he's the one that's going to decide who wins who the winner is, uh, just occurred to me. This is how, this is clarifying the five of wands and how you are viewing this connection in November. And I get the sense that you are really turning within to glean the answers, looking within, turning within, to learn more about how you feel potentially about the connection. Let's see what they are bringing to the table how they are viewing the connection. The King of Wands. You know, the King of Wands is somebody that you want on your side when you're about to begin a new business. Um, you're initiating something, a new project, a new endeavor, a new pursuit, uh, because they have resources at hand and they really know, again, how to leverage their network in order to make it happen, in order to realize something. So this is how they're viewing the connection in November. The sun. Oh, this is the happiest card in the deck. And by the way, ruler of the king of wands, source energy. Very positive take on this connection in November. 
this is the yes card, like all in, all in. Um, it's also a time, if you look at the imagery and the symbolism in this card, this is like an Adam and Eve vibe, right? There's this harvest, this bounty at their feet. Like anything is possible. It's a feeling of expansion and expansiveness. This is how they're viewing this connection in November. It's the King of Wands. What's this defended energy though? What's this defended energy about? This is in the composite energy. This is what happens when the two of you come together, this like heavily defended, guarded stance, which is confusing me at the moment because we have the King of Wands watching this conflict that represents you or the competition that represents you. It's like almost like they're like deciding something about you, deciding something about what you're capable of capable of what you're bringing to the table, if you're able to compete, if you're able to win inside of this competition. This is clarifying. Holy moly, I don't think I've ever seen this card before. This is clarifying the defended energy. What happens when the two of you come together in November and it's the magician. Similarities right off the bat. He's holding a sword heading in this direction and he is holding a wand heading in this direction. The magician is the initiator. It's the one, comes after the zero, which is the void. It's the new beginning. It's the first thing that comes out of the void, right? The initiator, having the tools and energy and resources, you need to bring something into fruition and something into reality. And very intentional about bringing this thing into reality. Um, he's working magic. Look, he's at the table. He's got the, the sword, the anatheme, theme, and the chalices, all these symbols of magic, the full moon behind him, all this power available to him. And this is clarifying this defense. Dude, somebody's trying to make something happen here. <laughs> and somebody else is like, uh-uh, no, I don't think so. No, like this defense is intense. And I feel like it's coming from your side because you have straight out the gates, you have this five of wands, like conflicted, challenged, competition, testing, energy, um, blocking. There's a lot of blocking. Look how, how all of these characters are blocking one another. Clarifying that is the high priestess really turning within to find answers. This is an intentional turning within to find, to, to like connect with how you really feel, to learn the secrets, to find the answers. And then in the composite energies, we have somebody defending themselves, somebody trying to make shit happen. It's like you are defending yourself against this person who's attempting to realize, bring down to earth, manifest something into reality with you. Maybe something, somebody that's very interested in you in November. <clears throat> this person, potentially, the King of Wands, who really has this high expectations for this relationship, for this connection, feeling really high vibe and feeling really good about what it, whatever it is that they think this connection is about. They're feeling good about this relationship, this connection, this partnership. But I'm not getting the sense that you're feeling, you're like sharing that vibe. Um, Queen of Cups. Let's clarify the insight. The Queen of Cups in the insight. So this queen always weirds me out a little bit in this deck because <laughs> there's this narrative that surrounds her traditionally, which is that she's very nurturing, very motherly, very... Um, emotionally available, very grounded, um, very positive. However, I'm going to show you this. Look at the way that she appears in this card. She is freaking intense. Look at her facial expression. She looks mad, disgruntled, um, discontent. 
And she's holding this very gothic kind of creepy looking chalice and really directing all of her intense energy toward it. And so if the chalice represents her emotions, she's like super involved with it. And it's intense. It's really intense. I almost get the sense that somebody's going to be upset. This is the insight, right? So let's clarify the insight. Somebody is focusing too much, too intensely on it. And somebody might not be very happy. Let's see. We got three cards that popped up. Now, this is clarifying the insight, the Queen of Cups, the Empress. Ooh, okay. The Eight of Pentacles. And the King of Pentacles. They're playing a game. Okay. So, ooh, the, the Empress and the Queen of Cups quite a lot remind me of one another um, in their, their meaning and symbolism. It is, you know, they're both queens. Um, the Empress is abundant, really connected with, you know, her quintessential energy, uh, very nurturing, often seen as the mother, creative, uh, able to just create abundance around her wherever she goes. Very loving, very nurturing. The Eight of Pentacles. Somebody is, the, the energy in this card is somebody is very, uh, feeling very romantic about someone and another person is not really connected to that feeling. So we're seeing this all the way through this reading at this point that somebody's invested in this connection and somebody is not really feeling it or feeling tested, feeling challenged, um, feeling defended, feeling guarded, blocked to sort of manifesting this connection, blocked to moving forward with this connection. And then finally, to clarify the Queen of Cups and the insight, we have the King of Pentacles. This is a game. This woman is sort of hiding from him and, and there, it looks like they're kind of chasing each other. And it's like coquettish, like she's being very coquettish. And he's like, I'm here to save the day. Look at his cape. And he's all muscle bound. I don't, I don't understand this in terms of the traditional um meaning of the king of pentacles this doesn't line up but often the sexual the tarot of sexual magic doesn't the symbolism and the the cards doesn't often line up with the traditional meaning so you, it's best just to look at what's happening in this picture she's feeling very modest very humble like not humble but modest like oh you know Either she's playing a game, she's very coquettish, or she's like, I, I'm, I'm actually feeling very like exposed and, and modest here and, and not necessarily wanting to directly connect. And I do get that vibe here from this reading in general. Somebody's not necessarily wanting to connect, not really like uncertain about if they want to connect with this person. And another person is like, I'm here for it right? King of Wands, Sun, Magician. <laughs> Shit. Uh, it's like full on radiant passion towards this connection. Well, yeah, just like, like fully exposed, like breasts out, tits out, like wanting, wanting you. And you're kind of like, uh, I'm thinking about something else. Not so sure. Do I really want to play this game? Okay, well, let's dive a little bit deeper, Gemini. Let's dive a little bit deeper here into you. How do you perceive this person? 
how do you perceive this person? When you, when you think about them, what do you see? Also want to know why. I guess we'll, we'll ask that question next. If it's you that's having a hard time connecting <clears throat> with this connection, with this person in November, let's learn more about why that might be. Who's defended? Who's guarded? And why? But first, how do you see this person in November? This connection, how do you see them? If this reading is resonating with you, please do hit the like button. It does help my work to elevate and the reading to circulate. Oh, and I really appreciate your support. All right, let's look at this. Also, I should mention that if you'd like a personal reading, I'm doing those now. The link is below. What we have, and when you look at this person, what do you see? These are positive cards. Silence and consciousness. Speaking of the void, I know that I mentioned that before that the magician follows the void. It's the thing that comes out of the void, the very first thing. This is the void. Anything is possible, pure potential. You know, it all exists there in the void. This is what you think when you see this person, when you think about them. This is how you see them. Anything is possible. Right now, it might seem black and dense and dark and like you can't really see what's in the void, right? Because it's the void. Um, but they are going to come out of the void with this magician energy in the composite, in the composite energy. And then again, this came out to clarify how you see them. And that is silence. So we were talking about silence with the high priestess that clarified you in November. Turning within. Turning within for the answers. I get a sense that when you think about this person, when you think about this connection, there's a lot that you don't see. There's a lot of unknowns. And you're really sitting with that and contemplating that. And you're in that place. You're just solidly in that place of like, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot that I don't see. And there's a turning within to learn those answers. To learn more. All right. How do, how do they see you? How do they see you in November? I mean, we got the sun for how they feel about the connection. This is like a... They feel like this is a soulmate connection, an Adam and Eve, like back to the basics, like the original people connecting type energy. But how do they see you when they look at you and they think of you? What do they see? Okay, here we go. Guidance. Ooh, wow. So they, they see an angel. <laughs> they think of you as very angelic as able to guide them in some way maybe they maybe you're an you're an expert or have achieved a certain status and they are perceiving you as being able to guide them in some way some unique way that they haven't experienced before three is a number of harmony and collaboration I mean, the King of Wands and the Sun energy and the Magician energy are all about making something happen on the business front. It might be that you are connected with this person through business, through work. Maybe there is some sort of vocation that is connecting the two of you where you are offering guidance to them or they see that you can guide them where it comes to this initiative, this new endeavor in some way. Um, what was the other thing that we said that we wanted to talk about? How you think about them, how they think about you. Oh, right. What is this guarded energy about? What do we want to use for that? Um, let's just use this gilded tarot. What is this guarded energy about? If there's some uncertainty in this connection, what is that about? Because I do get that. There are several cards that are insinuating some sort of uncertainty on the part of someone in this connection. 
Now, sometimes the energies can be flipped. So whether it's you or them is, uh, you'll know, you know. Um, but it's coming from, I feel like it's coming from you because on their end, it's so strong in terms of like certainty, the sun, the king of wands looking right at you, the magician, that's the composite energy. So what is this uncertainty about? Ooh, okay. <coughs> Nine of wands carrying a heavy burden. Seven of swords, a sneaky deception manipulation. Four of cups, a missed opportunity. Death, an ending. <laughs> Damn, that's pretty strong. This uncertainty is about some betrayal that happened some sneaky behavior, some deception, a missed opportunity, feeling very burdened. And in the midst or in the throes of an intense transformation that is undeniable and non-negotiable. Somebody might be still in working through some of this type of energy and you might have somebody coming into your life or somebody in your life right now that is just, I wanted to say on a totally different level, but it's not level. It's um, they're in a different space. They, you might be hiding or they might, whoever this is, might be hiding the fact that you're going through all of this. Not completely upfront about it because I say that because the other energy seems to be completely unaware of this. Or acting as, I mean, how, how unaware can you possibly be? Even when somebody's not sharing directly, verbally, like, hey, I've been through some shit. I'm still kind of working it out. I'm still feeling this way. Even if you're not sharing that verbally, you, there's cues, right, that um, are sent off, that are, that are available. And so this person doesn't even seem to be picking up on the cues, Except that the king is watching very intently this challenge, this conflict. Conflict. Uh, it was like this. So if they are picking up on the cues, they're not really acknowledging them and they want to move forward with you um, despite, despite the cues. All right. Um, hmm. <clears throat> Let's play with the dark mirror a little bit. Why does this person want to move forward with you? Why are they not paying attention to the cues? Or, you know, if it's not you, why is this energy present here? Of the King of Wands and the, the Sun? Oh. Gilded regret. There's definitely a sense of regret. Do they feel like they missed out on something? Gilded. When something is gilded, it is ornate, lavish, rich. It's like you got, you're, you're surrounding yourself with all of this gold and this lavishness. And it's an acting as if kind of energy, but it's behind the gilded mirror or behind the gilded ornate lavishness is a deep sense of regret. And this was clarifying the question that we asked, which was why this energy of coming forward in such a strong way, despite this uncertainty? I wonder if they feel like they missed out on an opportunity with you. And they are pushing forward despite all of the cues. They don't want to miss out on an opportunity with you. <clears throat> And they're ignoring some of the signs. This defense. This defense. Why this defense? Hope I'm not beating a dead horse here. <laughs> um, addicted. Queen of my world. Wow. Anger 
in chains. That's interesting in imagery there. Anger in chains. Something unresolved. The question was why this defense? Something unresolved. Anger, feeling bound to some thing from the past, feeling unresolved anger about it, feeling still very much tied to somebody from the past. This queen, just the queen of my world and addicted. Either addicted to this past connection or literally addicted to something, to a substance or to someone, just addicted to this unresolved issue from the past. Wow. Okay. Let's pull a card of advice for you. I don't know what I want to work with. I don't really want to work with that one. Excuse me deck is stuck in the box. Okay, let's work with the Crystal Wisdom Healing Oracle. It's by Judy Hall. She has an excellent book that describes the uh, properties of all of the crystals and the gems and the minerals. And it's very beautifully illustrated. And now she has this tarot deck or oracle deck. So some guidance. Oh, some guidance for you as you move through November where it comes to this connection what do you need to know Gemini some specific guidance for you if this reading resonates hit the like button if you're interested in a private reading a personalized reading with me I'm doing those now it's very exciting for me at least I love connecting with all of you especially inside of personal readings. Those are really fun. I think the best readings are interactive and collaborative and you know, you get to ask questions in real time. Um, yeah, the, the link is below if you're interested in that. Okay, so what we have here is the golden healer. Oh, I've never seen this one. The golden healer, two and seven, 27, two and seven is nine. That's nearing completion, nearing completion, golden healer. Let's read about it. Gemini. Ultimate healing. Beautiful. Golden healers are imbued with powerful transformative healing energies. They are a catalyst for profound spiritual activation. Self-understanding. Understanding the quantum world helps you understand yourself. The everyday self is bounded by five senses expanded by a sixth metaphysics. But this can be transcended to move into a field that is non-local, everywhere and nowhere at once, where there is no time. You create the event by being, you create the event being observed. Allow your soul rather than your ego to be your guide. Soul connection. Divination. Recognize your potential to be an amazing healer. Your abilities needed honing. And those who heal are soul scoured to develop empathy. Wow, that's a, a packed sentence. Your abilities needed honing. And those who heal are soul scoured to develop empathy. Much in your life needs transforming. Surrender willingly to the process. Someone clinging to the past holds you back. Encourage them to let go. You may be asked to transform your environment or take on a challenging task. Do so with grace and ease. Healing insight. Healing flows through you. It's a process, not something you do. The frequency is exceptionally high. The chakra is soul star and gateway, stellar gateway, and it aligns and cleanses all. The timing is every moment. The soul path is a channel for Christ consciousness fascinating. Okay, so the things that stood out to me here are much in your life needs transforming. There is definitely an energy here of somebody holding on to the past, unresolved issues from the past, uncertainty, defense, guardedness. Um, so there's a healing, like a soul scouring that needs to 
take place in order to develop empathy, empathy for yourself, empathy for others. I guess empathy is the ability to feel the feelings of another person. All right, Gemini, I hope that was helpful. If it was, please hit the like button, share with your friends, comment below. I'd love to hear about what this is all about for you in November 2020. Um, and uh, I'm wishing you the best this month. Take good care. It's like an idealized romantic connection. Something about it doesn't seem quite real. Like it's not the nitty gritty practical stuff that we have to deal, deal with or contend with when we get into a relationship. Like you really see, you know, um, the knit and the grit. No, this is like lofty, idealistic, romantic love. Hello, my dear Cancers. Hello, welcome. This is your love reading for November 2020. I'm excited to be here with you. I'm excited to connect with your energy. If you are thinking about someone in November, if you are in a relationship, or if you're just curious about a connection having to do with love, relationship, intimacy, then this reading is for you. I've already shuffled your cards. I'm giving them one last shuffle before we get into it. My name's Amanda. I'm at Lunaseek Tarot. If this is your first time here, thank you. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Consider subscribing. If you're coming back, if you're returning to my channel, it's good to see you. Thank you for coming back. If this reading resonates with you, please consider uh, hitting the like button so that it can be shared with a lot of others. And uh, your support really helps to elevate my work and helps my channel to circulate and gain more visibility. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Let's get in. All right. In the position of you and what you're contributing, we have the Eight of Wands. Fast moving energy. This is sometimes called the Cupid's card. So a message of love coming in. Maybe you're delivering a message of love. Um, saying something uh, heartfelt to your connection. Maybe something needs to be said or you have a desire to say something. Fast-moving communication. Passionate, creative. In the position of your partner and what they're contributing is the, what is this, the Six of Swords reverse. Hmm. On a journey in this space, get the sense that there's been some turbulent times for your partner. They are in the process of moving out of those turbulent times, but they're, they're still quite in the midst of it. The Six of Swords follows the Five of Swords, which is a conflict. You know, it's a, it's a, it's like a, you won the battle, but it, is in vain. You know, um, it's a win without empathy or compassion. And there's a lot of struggle and emotional conflict, emotional disappointment. Um, so I feel like your connection has been through something and is coming out of it, but there's, it, it'll take some time. They're still in process. They're still in progress. There's a wounded sort of energy here. In the position of the composite energies or what it is like when the two of you come together is the nine of discs, the nine of pentacles. Independence, self-sufficiency, satisfaction, um, being surrounded by a great deal of abundance. This is a woman who knows how to, excuse me, this is a woman who knows how to cultivate abundance in her life and also appreciate it. Um, very connected with it. Sometimes you can spend your whole life or you can spend your life energy uh, cultivating the thing that you think that you want. And when the, when you finally have it, it doesn't satisfy you. This is not this lady. She knows exactly what she wants. She knows how to get it. And when she gets it, she thoroughly enjoys it. So this is the composite energy, the nine of pentacles. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay, in the position of the inside, ooh, interesting. The uh, Eight of Swords, sorry. <laughs> I'm having an issue with Roman num numer numerals at this moment. Still too early in the morning. Okay, so this is the insight. Somebody's up in their head and uh, 
full of anxiety, feeling trapped, feeling imprisoned, feeling, you know, sort of bound by limiting negative beliefs. And they are illusory. This is not a reality. Look at how loosely bound this person is. It's even though it, it, it is illusory or it's happening on the mental plane, it still feels very real. And it is sometimes difficult to contend, even more difficult to contend with this type of anxiety, this type of fear, this type of concern and, and worry, um, these types of beliefs, because often they've been with us for a long time, right? And they are ephemeral, so unpacking them can be a little bit difficult. They play on us in um, subconscious ways, so sometimes they're hard to grab at and unpack. So this is the insight. Do you get a sense that the person you're connecting with in November has been through some sort of struggle or the relationship as a whole, the connection as a whole, has been through some sort of struggle and they are taking more time to work through it, processing it. They are in the the they are in um, the process of moving out of these feelings but it's still very much here oh wow i was i just got that song in my head that said always look at the bright side of life i was looking at this card when that popped into my head i mean it's very bright and she is looking at the bright side of life I wonder if you're bringing this energy. This is in the position of the composite energy. Like, hey, look at the abundance that surrounds you. We are surrounded by this beautiful abundance. And we created it. Okay. You're bringing in a message of love, fast communicate. You want to communicate. You want to communicate some sort of, like, passionate communication, passionate message to your partner, to your connection. You're feeling passionate about your connection. You might want to move fast to connect with this person. However, they're bringing this like sort of slower, darker, more lethargic energy, which is I'm still working through something. I'm still working through something that hurt me. Uh, mourning, grief, sadness, sorrow. Um, the insight, maybe particularly for you and what you need to know is that um, this, this person is you know, this connection or this person is really contending with some pretty intense negative beliefs that they feel trapped and bound by. I'm getting a sense that this is coming from them. So that's why I'm saying that, but it could be vice versa. You know how these things work. They switch up a lot. Oh, let's switch our decks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How do you feel about this connection? Where are you coming from? What's your perspective? Let's clarify the eight of wands in the position of you and what you're contributing. I'm not the whole deck. Let's do that again. Cancer. Cancer, November 2020. You got the eight of wands in the position of you and what you're contributing. And we want to clarify that. Fast moving. You want something fast? You want to clear this up. You want your partner to connect with the abundance around them. Ten of Swords. Yeah, you want you want a completion. Like this is over. Let's have a new beginning. Because <laughs> what follows an ending, a new beginning. Ten of Swords. Let's look at the imagery though here. Oh, she's crying. Oh. I don't think I've ever seen this card. Um, I've been working with this deck for a while, but I don't know that I've ever really paid attention to this one. Something's been lost for her. She's got one sword. She has one sword left. Look out the window. There's a couple that are making love, and she's sobbing, crying. There's a mirror. There's scissors. There's the sword with the snake wound around it. A candle. A spilled cup. Third-party situation. I get the sense that you want the sadness to be over. Maybe there was some sort of third party situation that you want, you know, like to resolve, like you want the, the resolution of the emotions um, that happened around this 
situation to be resolved. You want, you want some finality around that. Could be bringing in some sort of communication that has to do with that. Let's look at your partner. <clears throat> How are they perceiving this connection in November? They are the Six of Swords reversed. So we have three, three uh, swords here in the reading so far. We have the eight, the 10, and the six. Six of Swords reverse. How is your connection perceiving this connection in November? Here we go. Ooh, Five of Pentacles. Now in this deck, this tarot deck, this is the tarot of sexual magic. This is like idealized romanticism, right? This is the ideal romantic embrace. You know, they're on a balcony. There's uh, uh, twining foliage all around them. They're um, embraced in this passionate kiss. There's a violin there, beautiful music. It's like an idealized romantic connection. Something about it doesn't seem quite real. Like it's not the nitty gritty practical stuff that we have to deal, deal with or contend with when we get into a relationship. Like you really see, you know, um, the knit and the grit. No, this is like lofty, idealistic, romantic love. Now in the traditional tarot, the five of pentacles is poverty mentality. It's a it's like being left out in the cold. It's being disconnected, um, feeling as if you don't have enough, uh, feeling as if you're not supported. So for what it's worth, that's how they're seeing this relationship, this connection in November. I want to look a little bit more at them because it seems like they might be going through some struggles happening mentally. And of course, our thoughts affect our emotions. So I want to look a little bit about what the situation, what, how they're really feeling, what this conflict inside of them is about. I'm going to use the dark mirror to explore that a little bit more. Ooh, these are super sticky. I have to work with that. How, you know, what is this anxiety concern? What is this thing that's really sort of haunting them that is that they're struggling with here weird card came up for you ten of swords how you perceive the connection some sort of um something happened some sort of betrayal some sort of third party situation you really just want a conclusion to like hey let's move on with some finality here <clears throat> here we go triumph of lies so the question was, what is your partner really struggling with here on the mental plane? What anxieties and concerns are they, are they having? Um, was there some sort of lie that, that kind of created a, a block between the two of you, a barricade between the two of you? Or was this, did this happen between you? Is this in your person's past? Triumph of lies. It's a number one. One suggests new beginnings. Interesting. Let's pull some more cards. I want to know more about this conflict that's happening for your, your connection. It does seem to be some sort of deception that took place here. I don't know if it was inside of your connection or, or if it's fallout from this person's past. <clears throat> oh. Again, moving on after a really difficult time, some sort of conflict in the past, somebody won, there was a clear winner, but it was a win without compassion, a win without empathy, a win in vain. It's like blood on your hands, right? How good does that feel? Caused a tower moment for your partner. Everything came crashing down, everything that they knew to be true the, founda the very foundation that they stood upon just came crumbling down, having to rebuild again. Your partner's going through some pretty intense shit over here. Uh, that's for sure. Okay, let's clarify some of these other cards. What happens when the two of you come together? The composite energies. We are clarifying the Nine of Pentacles. Independent self-sufficiency. This is sometimes seen as the independent lady card. She's, a, she's single, single lady. 
single lady self-sufficiency and you know satisfaction i personally love this card i love to see it come up in my own readings um, because it really does feel it just reminds me of that feeling of like what it what it means to be independent and satisfied in your independence it feels really good it feels very freeing so composite energies, what happens when the two of you come together in November? What are the composite energies for this connection in November? Whoa, I got this card for Taurus. I got, no, we're putting these back. I got both of these cards. I'm going to show them to you. I'm going to describe them to you, but I'm going to pull some more. Yesterday's reading, I got both of these cards. So I wonder if you're dealing with a Taurus. <laughs> what the fuck? In the same position, clarifying the same position, not this card, but the same position, the six of wands and the seven of pentacles. This is a fascination with something about you or vice versa. You're fascinated with something about them. And it's just so intriguing. And like in this situation, it's her, her booty, her butt very like that is so enticing. Um, and then so like the strong sexual connection around a specific fetish, a specific thing. And then the seven of pentacles, which is checking out together, you know, like intoxication. They, um, you know, just like fucked each other to death. <laughs> and now they're completely intoxicated and, you know, like checking out. So this is a checking out card. If you guys come together and then you, you know, party hard, you, you have a lot of sex and then you check out, um, then that's what kind of what this card means to me. Let's pull a few more cards though. I'm going to put these here. Um, if you're dealing with a Taurus, you might want to go back and watch that, that reading, which happened, um, yesterday because those two cards came up in that very same position. Composite energies, though. How does that relate to the Independent Lady card? Okay, here we go. Two of Pentacles, Composite Energies. Well, look at that green dress that she's wearing. Green is the color of the heart chakra, the heart space. She's in the heart space. There's some sort of spell that's happening. Look at what's burning down here. A love spell. And he is not quite sure what he's doing. He's like sneaking up on her or like coming to kiss her back. They don't seem very well matched though, do they? Like he's in these, she's in a very elegant gown and he's sort of in jeans and a, a shirt, a Henley or a dress shirt. There's one star in the window pane. She's a star. She's a star. She is a star. He, it's like he doesn't quite know how to approach her. And he does look a little like ghoulish, doesn't he? She is just striking. So this is your composite energies. What happens when the two of you come together? You blend your energies in November. That's weird. I mean, not weird. It's interesting. Um, let's recap. In the position of you, we have the eight of wands, some sort of fast moving energy, a communication of love, a message of love. Clarifying how you feel about this connection is the Ten of Swords. You want some sort of finality where it comes to something that happened in the past, some betrayal that happened in the past, some sort of emotional disappointment that's brought about a great deal of anxiety. You want that to be over and done with. This person's in the throes of it, though. I mean, they want a romantic, an ideal romantic connection with you, but it doesn't seem totally real, does it? It's just like lofty, floaty, ephemeral, romantic, um, fantasy, fantasy land. Um, they're moving through something difficult. We had this card show up twice to clarify this position, to clarify the Six of Swords showed up to, to clarify the Six of Swords reversed. 
So they are definitely progressing out of whatever this anxiety is, whatever this pain from the past, but they're still in it. They're still in it. Some betrayal happened, some lie that caused a tower moment. Everything that they knew came crashing down. They got to contend with it. The insight is that there is some sort of negative limiting belief that is imprisoning someone here. Someone's feeling trapped by their thoughts, by their anxieties. It's illusory, but it feels very real. The composite energies are that this the single lady card and just like feeling very sad. You are a star. Somebody is a star here. Feeling very satisfied. This person definitely sees you as very enticing. You know, very, look, enticing, enticing, very enticing. Um, they also see your strengths, the strength of your beauty, the strength of your independence, the strength of your self-sufficiency. There's passion here for sure. Be wary of this card. This person might be checking out because of uh, their emotional, mental experiences right now. And I don't know if you want to join them there or not. You're, you're coming from a pretty strong place. Let's clarify the insight, which is the Eight of Swords. <clears throat> All right. What is this Eight of Swords energy? This is feel like this is a message from them to you. What you need to know about where they're at right now. Um, it might be something that you're having a hard time connecting with because you're coming from a totally different place, a place of strength, independence, self-sufficiency, fast-moving, passionate energy. Um, and they're kind of stuck in the murky, deep, dark um, vibe of anxiety and concern, betrayal, lies, deception, uh, giant transformation. It feels somewhat unwanted, like unprovoked non-participatory on their part like hey i didn't ask for this um so let's see about this eight of swords in the position of the inside something that you need to know about this connection about what your connection is going through in november okay dark mirror you want to give it up to us Seven of Pentacles. It is strange that the Seven of Pentacles and the Six of Wands came up to clarify um, colorless angel. Yeah, they're depressed. You know, no surprise that colorless angel came up to clarify the Eight of Swords. This is that vibe of just like, I, you know, when you're depressed. There's no grounding. You can't connect to anyone or anything. It's like there's no life. You're, you're, you're drifting. Um, you're, oh, what is the word I'm looking for? Driftless. You're drifting. You're drifting on, it feels just like you're drifting on the ocean with no anchor. And you, you have nothing to give. You Maybe just be aware that your partner is struggling with that type of feeling in November. I mean, it seems like you want an ending of some sort of situation here that has your partner bound up. They're still in it. They're in the throes of it. They're still trying to work through it and you want it to move more quickly. You want it to move more quickly, but it doesn't look like they're able to do that. Um, let's pull a message of guidance for you in November. How can you more gracefully approach this situation in November? What message do you really need to hear where it comes to this connection? A message of guidance, prescriptive advice for you in November where it comes to this connection cancer. These cards are, they're really long, so they're awkward to shuffle, but I love them. Okay. Skunk. Skunk. Let's read about skunk. <clears throat> Reputation. 
skunk medicine. Go ahead and laugh. This furry little animal has a reputation that contains a great deal of power. Due to its distinctive behavior, humans give this tiny, smelly creature a wide berth. The key word here is respect. Unlike other predatory animals, skunk does not threaten your life, but threatens your senses. You know this to be true if you've ever been in the vicinity of its spray. In observing the habit patterns of skunk, it's easy to notice the playfulness and nonchalance of its natural behavior. The I dare you attitude of this four-legged creature commands you, as the observer, to respect its space by mere reputation alone. Skunk is, is teaching you that by walking your talk and by respecting yourself, you will create a position of strength and honored reputation. The carriage of your body relates to others what you believe about yourself. There's no need to bully, aggravate, torment, or overpower other beings when your sense of self is intact. As with skunk, the resonant field of energy around your body is relayed through the senses. Self-esteem permeates the body's energy and is instantly recognized on an extrasensory level by others. This is just really making me think of this woman here. Self-esteem, self-respect. Also, this woman here that clarified the Nine of Pentacles. Learn to assert without ego what you are. Respect follows. Your self-respectful attitude re will repel those who are not of like mind and yet will attract those who choose the same pathway. As the odor of skunk attracts others of its kind, it repels those who will not respect its space. Skunk medicine people have the ability to attract others and they are very charismatic. I get that from you this month with the Eight of Wands and the Nine of Pentacles. <clears throat> At the same time, the other side of their natural power is to repel those who seek to take energy from them without recycling the gifts they've taken. Skunk medicine people also know how to use the energy flows that will attract a lover. Some people call this sexual magic as it is, oh, hey, didn't we talk about somebody casting a spell? <laughs> Some sort of communication around love. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt this skunk narrative. Doesn't it look like there's some sort of spell that has to do with love happening here? Look at how this is wafting out. Some sort of communication around love. Okay, sexual magic. <laughs> Interesting. Some people call this sexual magic as it is akin to the musk scent that animals excrete to attract a mate. It can be, a da it can be dangerous to leak sexual energy if you are not looking for a mate. It puts you into a games condition that may feed your ego, but not how others feel about you. If you are attracting others who have an interest in you, you are saying, in a sense, I'm available. This can cause hard feelings when the truth comes out. It also leaks energy that you could have used in a more constructive way. That might have a message for somebody. In skunk medicine, it is good to learn how to handle energy flows. Modern psychologists call this body language. In tribal teachings, this is your personal medicine which you are showing to others. Use your medicine well and, how, and know that you are known by your reputation. How you use your energy will attract either honor or disgrace. You may want to examine what energy you're putting out that creates your present situation. If you've chosen this symbol, you're being asked to notice the kinds of people who are attracted to you. If they emulate favorable characteristics, have enough self-esteem to recognize those characteristics within yourself. Walk tall and be proud of the accomplishments you have made. Bear in mind that what you believe about yourself is your ultimate projection. Project self-respect. Whoa, lots of messages here for you. There is this woman, whoever this woman is, if it's you, somebody around you, definitely projecting self-respect. Look how open her body is. It, Skunk was talking about body language and using your body language to project how you feel about yourself in order to attract the people into your life that will resonate with that and also reflect that. Um, they talked about sexual magic, um, ener using energy flows for attraction and how that is a form of sexual magic. And there is a um, card here that speaks to some sort of love spell. 
Now, the Eight of Wands is a message of love, and it's fast moving. It's very intentional. So there's some sort of communication coming from your end, your end towards this connection. Like, I want you, or I love you, or let's connect, or I'm interested in you. Um, talked about leaking energy as well. Be paying very close attention to your energy so that, uh, and also to who is attracted into your life. Um, if you're not available, don't act as if, essentially. It's a waste of constructive, a, w a waste of um, using energy constructively. Waste of energy. That's skunk. All right, Cancer. I hope this uh, reading resonated with you. If it did, hit the like button. If you're interested in a personal reading, I'm doing those now. There's a link below. Um, subscribe to my channel. I'm wishing you the best in November. This sounds like a little bit of a complicated situation with some darker, heavier energy over here on the side of your, your connection. Um, I feel like you want to move, you want to move quickly. You want to resolve this thing. You want to get it going. You want to pick it up. Um, you feel fairly passionate at this time, but there does seem to be some obstacles to overcome. For me, it feels like it's on the part of your connection. Yeah. All right, Cancer. Take good care. Hi, Leo. Welcome to your love reading for November 2020. If you're thinking about somebody, if you have a connection with someone and you want to learn more, we're going to take a global perspective of the connection. We're also going to dive deep and look into more specifics. So this is a reading for you. My name is Amanda. I'm at Luna Sync Tarot. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate you being here. If this reading resonates with you, consider liking it so that it can be shared far and wide with others. Um, you can subscribe to my channel. I would love that. And also leave a comment below. I love chatting with all of you. If you're interested in a private reading, I am doing those. And there is a link in the description box down below. Feel free to check that out. Whoa. I have been shuffling your cards for a while. Meditating on your cards. Leo. Let's get into this. Let's sync up. All right. I'm going to cut the deck three ways. We're going to look at you. We're going to look at them. We're going to look at the composite energies and we're going to look at the insight of the connection in the position of you and what you're bringing to the table. We have the eight of wands, fast moving communication. Sometimes this is seen as the Cupid's card, like a message of love comes forward very swiftly, sometimes surprisingly. Eight is the number of infinite abundance and also universal energy. Yeah, okay, so in the position of the other, we have the fool, the void, anything is possible, ultimate potential, stepping off the cliff, brand new beginning, open and receptive, full moon energy. In the position of the composite energies, we have strength. What did I say about eight? This is number eight, Major Arcana. So is the Fool. Um, taming your baser instincts, getting control of your emotions. This is the composite energy, like, oh, strength, like a strong, strong connection here. Taming the beast. And then in the position of the insight, we have the Page of Swords. What the fuck? I don't like this card. Um, I know I should be neutral about cards, but this is like one of my least favorites. Um... The Page of Swords, in the positive, there are positive aspects of this card for sure, is about uh, research. Pages are apprentices. They're all about learning. Um, this is sometimes seen as the spy card. Somebody's watching you very closely, learning as much as they can about you through social media, through... Um, Maybe they're just, you know, maybe you, you work in the same place with them and they're watching you there. They're watching your movements. They're gathering information about you. Right? This is the insight. It could just be a call to learn more, to pay closer attention, to be more observant. 
sometimes in the, it's not in the negative, but in the negative, it's seen as, you know, um, immature energy, just an immaturity all up in your head, not connected with your heart, but it's not in the reverse. It's in the upright. So it's a call to like really learn more, observe more, um, put your witnessing goggles on, witness this person, witness this connection, observe this connection at this time in November. Let's learn more. So some sort of swift um, communication, communication from the heart, a passionate communication, a passionate message coming in. This is you bringing this to the table, bringing some sort of passionate expression, message, communication to the table. Um, and your connection is the fool, open, receptive to this communication, open and receptive to this connection. Um, anything is possible. And that's their perspective on this. Like, sh there's a lot of potential here. Anything is possible. And when you come together, your energies, you have the strength card. Infinite abundance. In control of your baser instincts. Taming the beast. A lot of strength here between the two of you. This is a strong connection. And then we have this call, the insight is to learn more, observe more, research, put, witness this connection, observe this connection at this time. All right, let's get into the fun stuff. Let's see what they think about you and about this connection. How do they feel about you? How are they seeing you at this time in November? <clears throat> okay. Ooh. Ooh, Ace of Swords. Okay, so the Fool is all about a new beginning. Anything is possible. It's the void. It's the zero. Ultimate potential. The Ace of Swords. The Aces are also about a new beginning. This is a new idea, a new way of thinking. Um, however, in this card, let's look at the imagery. This is, the question was, how do they think about you? How do they feel about you? How do they see you? They see you as very able to take control of a situation and they like that, right? They see you as very confident in your movement and in your approach. They like to, they enjoy that energy. It allows them to relax a little bit. They like that you take the lead. They like that about your connection. <clears throat> Let's see how they're seeing you. Let's, let's just pull some more cards. I want to know more. I want to know a little bit more about how they see you in this connection in November. Leo. Oh, hey, Leo, your card showed up. I forgot to mention that. Leo, this is your card. There you are, the lion. So something about this connection allows you to step into your own energy, right? You're really feeling like you can be yourself inside of this connection. Oh. Five of Pentacles showed up to further clarify how they see this connection, how they see you. The Five of Pentacles. This is um, in the traditional deck being left out in the cold, neglect, abandonment, poverty mentality. However, in this particular tarot deck, let's pay attention to the imagery. Five is the number of conflict and change. I don't see much conflict in this imagery. This is like the ultimate romantic um, scene playing out before us. They're on a balcony surrounded by an abundance of beautiful roses and vining foliage. There's a violin. I mean, how much more romantic can you get? Like this is full of romantic symbolism. And they're embraced and they're kissing. Yeah, I mean, they, they feel like this is the, like, the ultimate romantic connection. They see you very romantically. They got, you know, like, I keep saying this, but their, their goggles on, like their rose-colored glasses on where it comes to this connection. They're feeling very romantic about you. How do you feel about them? What is up with this uh, passionate communication that you're bringing forward here in November. Are you coming to them and saying, hey, I'm into you. Let's do this. How do you feel about them? 
Oh, what's that? Four of Cups. Ooh. Four of Cups. Look at that. Can you see that? Okay. They're at a gate. They're about to walk through this gateway. They're considering walking through this gateway. She's telling him something about going through this passage. And he's looking past the gate and very thoughtfully considering walking through. There's some sort of communication around, around walking through this gate, taking it to the next level. This is how you see them. You are magnetizing and working, working some sort of spell working some sort of spell and looking at these symbols down here to magnetize this person through the gateway or into your life, into a relationship. You want this person. You want this connection. Wow. Okay, let's pull another card. How do you see them? How do you see this connection? Who are they to you? Yeah, they're seeing you very romantic, like ultimate, ultimate romance. They like that you take the lead. And it seems like you are taking the lead here. You're bringing forward this message, this passionate message, passionate communication, the Cupid's card. Sorry, let's keep going. And you're, you're magnetizing them into your life. Taking the lead. Let's see what this is. Ooh, Queen of Wands. Okay, yeah, that is Queen of Wands energy. <laughs> Hate of Wands, Queen of Wands. I mean, the Queen of Wands is like the woman that walks into the room. Oh, funny. These look like goggles. I keep saying goggles. I don't use that word very frequently, but in this reading, I think I've said it twice. And doesn't it look like those are goggles down there? Maybe that has some sort of significance for somebody. Maybe there's a swimmer in the connection. I don't know. Anyways, the Queen of Wands is the woman that walks into the room and everybody's eyes turn. She's very magnetizing. Um, it just radiates this, this uh, vivacious, passionate, joyful, creative energy. She's the quintessential energetic witch. She knows how to use her energy very wisely. She networks with a lot of people. She's very um, attractive, very connected, and she works with others in order to accomplish her goals. So, wow. This, however, we ask the question, how are you seeing this connection? How are you perceiving this person? And I don't know, either you're perceiving them as this queen of wands energy, or you're stepping into this energy in order to magnetize this relationship. Like this is what you see you must do in order to pull this connection toward you. There is a pulling. This is like a power couple kind of thing. Like the dynamics, the, the dynamics are very balanced. They like that you take the lead. You are, you feel very confident in taking the lead. You feel like that's your natural, that's your natural place. Leo. Leo is definitely queen of wands, queen of wands energy. Um, let's clarify what happens when the two of you come together. I want to learn a little bit more about your composite energies, your combined energies when you connect. What are the benefits of that? Ooh, you're going to travel somewhere. Traveling. Either you're going to travel with this person or traveling is a um, essential component of your connection or and or it's about taking a global perspective you know, look at the vantage point in this card. You can really see far and wide. Awesome. Let's learn more about what happens when you two come together. I like this idea of traveling for sure. Going places. If you're not physically traveling together, then it's, it's going to feel like an adventure. 
it's gonna it's gonna feel like you're learning new things all the time like you're experiencing this connection in new ways it, or it allows it allows you a perspective that just feels very very global mm, beautiful look a blending of energies a friendly blending of energies the sense that you guys are just going to be real good friends like i was saying the energies between the two of you feel very magnetic they feel in some ways just like um very balanced very polar but very balanced in their polarity he likes he she likes you they like you to take the lead so that they can relax you love to take the lead <laughs> this is your natural um ability to take the lead you are very magnetic they want to be magnetized there's scissors in both of these cards this came up for you see the scissors and this came up for them, the scissors, some, some, some sort of cutting. Something about scissors. I love scissors as a symbol. Um, yeah, friendliness, a blending of energies that's just really, it's a very alchemical, it's very, it's, it's very balanced. It's also very friendly. That's beautiful. Let's clarify this uh, call for you to be observant. Observe this connection. Sometimes you can get lost in like the passionate aspects of uh, just the way something feels, right? Um, and this is a call for you to get a little bit more analytical, a little bit more researchy, learn more. So not only feeling this, but also using your observational skills to learn more about this connection. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? This page of swords and the position of the insight. <clears throat> I want to learn a little bit more about that. But yeah, Leo, you're stepping into your power here. Your card showed up, the strength card. This connection really makes you feel like you can be yourself. And that you're appreciated for who you are. That's awesome. We all want that, right? Success. Yeah, your success in this connection lies in your ability to observe what it is actually about. To learn more about it. To know as much as you can about it. So it's about feeling, but it's also about thinking. Six. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, let's pull a guidance card for you as you move, as you magnetize this connection to you in November, because there's a lot of magnetic communication happening here. Spell work too. I'm going to put this one down. I think because this one is crinkled, it consistently pops up, but I'll show you what it says. It's Maeve. It's cycles and rhythms. It's about getting in touch with your body. Um, but let's pull another guidance card. I should probably get a new deck. Oh, ooh. Sieg. Quiet time. Take some quiet time alone to rest, meditate, and contemplate. You are outputting a lot of energy here with the Queen of Wands energy, the Eight of Wands energy really attempting to communicate something very strongly, attempting to magnetize something to you very strongly. And then there's this call to observe, step outside, observe the connection, learn more about the connection. And then this guidance to have some quiet time, meditate, contemplate, rest, be alone. So let's see, it's maybe the last thing that you want to do, but the thing that you're being called to do. Quiet your mind, breathe and let go of words, <clears throat> worry and plans. 
Go into that space of silence deep within you, that vortex of peace where the world doesn't enter. Now is the time to retreat in silence and spend time alone. I'll lovingly, lovingly help you rejuvenate and recenter yourself. Don't try to make any decisions now. Just allow your mind to, to rest. You'll soon know enough when it's time to take action. But for now, quiet, quiet your mind and rest. So various meanings of this card are go on a retreat, listen more and talk less, avoid loud noise and sounds, meditate, surrender mind chatter to heaven and know that you're more sensitive to noise now let's read about this goddess siege siege sorry it's pronounced siege the the gnostic goddess siege is considered to be the great silence or void from which all creation sprang siege reminds us that the words that words create duality and that in silence we find our true origin and self Quiet is omnipresent power that gives birth to wisdom, just as the Gnostics hold that siege is the mother of Sophia, the goddess of wisdom. Siege teaches that our roots are in the silent void of the universe and that it's important for us to reconnect with silence regularly. Yeah. So the suit of swords is all about knowledge, wisdom. This page here is about learning about something, observing something, researching something. I feel like these two cards go quite well together. Siege is quiet time, which is what the, the, the posture that you should take in order to be observational, right? Get quiet, get quiet, observe. I feel like your success in this connection is dependent on your ability to observe, be quiet, and to learn more, learn more about the connection. Now, they also talked about the void. They talked about Sophia. What did they say? Siege teaches that our roots are in the silent void of the universe. That is... Okay, shut up. This is the card that came out for your connection. This is the void, right? Where all things are possible. You are being called to learn more about your partner, about your connection through silent observation in order to root into this connection. Your success is dependent upon that action, upon your ability to do that. Wow. Okay, Leo. If you like this reading, hit the like button so that it can spread amongst others. Um, if you'd like a private reading, there's a link in the description box below. Please comment on this reading. I'm really curious about how this is playing out for you in November. Um, and consider subscribing to my channel. I hope you have a beautiful November. Hi, Virgo. This is your love reading for November 2020. If you are thinking about someone, if you're involved with someone, and you want to get a global overview of what's happening inside of your relationship or what's happening with them, and then also take a deep dive into the relationship, the energies of the relationship, this reading is for you. My name's Amanda. I'm at Luna Sync Tarot. Thank you for joining me here. If this reading resonates with you, please hit the like button. Um, comment below. I love your comments. I love talking with you. And also consider subscribing to my channel. All of that support really helps to elevate my work and I greatly appreciate it. So... Let's see, Virgo, November 2020, what is going on in the realm of love, relationship, intimacy? We're going to look at how they feel about you, what they think about you, and what happens when the two of you come together. All right, final shuffle. Let's sync up. I'm going to cut the deck three ways. first card we have here is you and what you're contributing to the relationship. It's the two of discs reverse. Then we have them, what they are contributing to the relationship. It's the three of discs reversed. Then we have the composite energies. This is what happens when the two of you come together. This is what your shared energy is like. And then we have the insight, strength. 
All right, so the two of you might be going through a challenging time right now. Maybe a little bit of discord. I'm hearing discord. Um, you you might be very busy and overwhelmed with your the level of responsibility that you have right now, Virgo. Juggling and, and feeling like you're not doing that very well. <laughs> not multitasking very well here. Having a decision to make, but um, experiencing indecision, not knowing what, what choice, what option to choose. Um, you might be juggling multiple lovers, multiple partners, multiple options in the way of love. Um, your partner here, the person that you're thinking about in November is the three of dis. Lack of collaboration, really not collaborating with you. There may be some distance. There may be a disconnect. Um, may want to collaborate, but unable to at this time. The composite energy is what happens when the two of you come together. It's sort of a missed opportunity. There's some sort of missed opportunity, not seeing the opportunity that's in front of you. Feeling sort of bored or apathetic or at least unaware. This is a divine cup of love that's being offered. And both of you are missing it somehow. There is going to be a lot of strength that is needed in order to rectify the situation between you and your partner, between you and the person that you're thinking about. This is about taming baser instincts, getting your emotions under control, and um, in order for them to, to benefit you, to serve you. You know, you can, you can become aware of and work with your emotions in a very beneficial, positive way. And sometimes the, your emotions can run the show. They can drive the bus. This is really getting your emotions in control in order to move forward in a beneficial way. So I do get a sense that there's some sort of disconnect here. There's a lack of collaboration. There's a decision that needs to be made that, that somebody feels like, I don't know how to make this decision. There are options. Um, let us, what should we do? Let's see how your love interest in November feels about you. What are they thinking about you? <clears throat> what are they thinking about this connection? How are they feeling about this connection in November? Okay. It was this one that popped up. It's the Queen of Cups. They really see you as very loving and compassionate. I get a sense that they have a lot of love for you. Um, and they see you as their ideal emotional match. They feel very comforted by you. They feel very uh, consoled, very um, nurtured and nourished by the way that you um, interact with them, the way that you love them, the way that you care for them. Um, they do appreciate you, and there's a lot of love here between the two of you. They adore you, and they love the way that you love them. How about you? How are you feeling about them? How do you see them in this relationship? Are you looking at them as a match? Are you looking at them as a mismatch? it does seem like you have some indecision here <clears throat> feelings of uh, overwhelm feelings of confusion how do you feel about your love interest here in november how are you seeing them here we go okay eight of cups yeah indecision not knowing quite how you feel about them look at how this man is making this this uh, emotional gesture an emotional offering toward her and she's turning away like no I don't think so I'm not really feeling this the eight of cups in the traditional tarot is a card of walking away now note that while this man he seems to be trying to be romantic um, thinking he's very romantic, but notice how he's not even looking at her. So it's not even about her, really. 
And that might be the way that you're feeling about this person. You know, do they even really see me? It seems to be more about them than it has to do with me and some sort of genuine, authentic connection that we have. So this is clarifying you and what you're bringing to the table here in November. How you feel about them. How you feel about this connection. Let's clarify... <clears throat> Let's clarify the composite energies, what happens when the two of you come together. I'm going to work with the dark mirror cards because sometimes they'll bring up the different shadow aspects of a connection. And there does seem to be some sort of like apathy or boredom or turning away um, uh, of some sort of divine opportunity, divine cup of love. So... Let's get clear here. What is What are the composite energies here? What happens when the two of you come together in November? Here we go. Masquerade. Whoa. Masquerade. Clarifying the Four of Cups. Somebody's acting as if somebody's putting on a show Somebody's hiding their true feelings. Somebody's not really into this. Ooh. Okay. And then finally, the strength card and the insight. Let's clarify the strength card. <clears throat> what is this about? You know what? I have a million decks out here, and so sometimes it's hard to know which one to choose, but I'm going to choose the right of weight again. I want to know a little bit more about this. What's going on between the two of you? You're not feeling this. Somebody's not feeling this. I shouldn't say you, but it is in the position of you. Sometimes these energies are flipped, so I'm trying to um, maintain uh, neutral language because that is often the case that the energies are flipped. Somebody's not feeling this. Somebody has a choice to make and they're stalling. There's indecision. Masquerade, uh, not seen. Look at, oh my gosh, these, uh, look at how similar the expressions are on their faces. Looking down, eyes cast down, looking away, not seeing something. That's what happens in a masquerade though, right? You don't actually see the true person. You don't see who they actually are. Hiding something, not aware of something. So strength, we're going to clarify um, the insight here. This is also tapping into universal energy, infinite abundance. Yeah, rest and recuperation, recovery. Get a sense that something happened here between the two of you that felt like a betrayal. It felt like uh, it took a huge toll on you either energetically um, physically, emotionally, and you are, somebody is in a forced recovery, a forced recuperation. There's not really a choice about that. You have to stop and lie down. Um, what was this thing that happened here? What is the insight? Let's clarify the insight. King of Pentacles. <clears throat> personality around you that is a very established uh, king type authority figure, uh, leadership abilities, spent their entire lifetime building abundance and now they're surrounded by it. Slow moving, thoughtful, methodical. This is a personality. This might be this person that you're involved with or it might be you. Happiness at one point, ultimate emotional fulfillment. I mean, if anybody's going to bring it, it's going to be the king, the king of pentacles. They're all about that, that life, right? Ultimate emotional fulfillment. At one point, this connection might have brought that to you. Could be that that's what you want and you know it. And this isn't doing it for you. A new beginning. Yeah, you want it. You want a new beginning. You want something new. Here comes the queen of, of uh, cups again. Is this you, Virgo? 
If so, you're in your own energy right now. Somebody did something sneaky. Somebody did something deceptive. And now there's a, a recovery from that type of energy. It took a toll. It took a toll. All right. What does this person have to say to you? What do they have to say? It looks like they're wanting you. They're not collaborating with you. They're not talking to you. They're not communicating, but they, they hold you in very high esteem. They love the way that you love them. They see who you are. They, <laughs> what they have to say to you is they see you as their perfect match, their soulmate. They're also experiencing quite a lot of anxiety at this time, sleepless nights. I don't get the sense that they're communicating with you, though. Oh, they see you as the Empress. They hold you in very high esteem. They're thinking about you constantly. They're missing you. They're not reaching out. They're not collaborating. There's a lack of collaboration. <clears throat> but they want to. They want to be your emperor. They want to be your match. They want to be your match. They do see you. <laughs> you. You know what? I don't know. This this may or may not be true, but I am getting the sense that they see you very clearly. They see who you are very clearly. They see that you are juggling. They see that you have a decision to make. Um, remember, this came out for you and what you're bringing to the table, and this came out um, to clarify how it is they they feel about you what they think about you um we had two cards they see you as their queen of cups we have two queens of cups here this was clarifying the insight maybe they fucked up somehow they did something we have the seven of swords here which is an act of deception manipulation we have the four of swords here which is a, a recovery from some betrayal some heartbreak something that took a very huge energetic toll you're like hey dude i don't know if i'm into you anymore i might just walk away from this you're wondering you're really wondering if this is an authentic connection if this person is authentic if you can trust this person, are you really seeing them for who they are? Are they showing you who they really are? Let's pull some guidance cards for you as you move through the energy of this relationship, this connection in November. It does feel like you have a decision to make and you're having a lot of doubt. Who is this person? Who are you anyway? He or she, you're the person you're thinking about, wants to be your king. <laughs> Look, we got the empress and the emperor showing up in how they feel about you, what they think about your connection. They think you are their perfect match, and they think they are a king. I don't know that you're feeling their kingliness. Um, again, we have the queen of cups. We have the Queen of Cups for how they think about you. We have the Empress for how they think about you. We have the Emperor. And we have the Lover's card. They're all in on this for sure. But they're having anxiety. I know that they know that you're making a decision about them somehow. They are not collaborating with you at the moment. And that might be part of the problem for you. You might be like, hey... I'm not sure this person is going to collaborate with me in the sight of this relationship. Equal give and take. <clears throat> prescriptive cards for guidance. Prescriptive advice. Silence. It's going to take some silence on your part to really get connected with how you feel. To get that, to glean that wisdom about how to move forward to make the decision that you need to make. Again, just reinforcing the, the, um, the silence card. Turning within. If you're having anxieties, if you're juggling a lot of thoughts, turn in to get clarity, to seek clarity here, to be able to make this decision. I want to know a little bit more about your fears and anxieties about this person. So we're going to use the dark mirror again. What concerns do you have about this connection and about this person? What happened between the two of you? This betrayal, this deception, this manipulation, this forced recovery, this thing that took a huge energetic toll. 
Yeah, you totally doubting the authenticity of this person. You feel like they played you somehow. They they put on a show. They played you. And now you're like, who are you really? <laughs> yeah, I can see you're into me. You're seeing me clearly, but I cannot see you clearly. Who are you? This person might just be sort of in love with the in love with love, in love with the idea of love, romanticism, fantasy, projection. I'm not doubting that you're the Queen of Cups in their mind and in in reality. But I also get a sense that you're seeing through some of that. Um you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. But do you really see me? Can you really meet me? Or is this all about you and how you want to feel? Right? Let's pull one more card for your concerns and um, fears about this person, this connection. <clears throat> Virgo, November 2020. If this reading is resonating with you, please hit the like button, comment and share, subscribe to my channel. All of it helps to support, elevate uh, my work and support my work. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So what are some of your concerns? More of your concerns and anxieties. What are you thinking about this person? Maybe the dark mirror doesn't want to give it up to us. Maybe those are the two cards, Masquerade and Artificial Heart. Maybe that's all we need to know. Here we go. Perchance to dream. Oh, Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Um, Yeah, I get a sense that this person is more in love with the idea of love. I don't know that you feel that this person is genuinely seeing who you are, genuinely into who you are more into how they need you to be, want you to be, imagine. I mean, it's like you could be anybody, right? You could be anybody. This person is more in love with the idea of love than they are in love with you. That's how you feel. That's how you're feeling about this. These are all good things to communicate. <laughs> I wonder if they would be receptive. Um, to that communication or if they're just too far into whatever their dream um, to, to be able to hear that from you Virgo Virgo yeah you have the tools and the energy and the resources that you need to manifest something something new something new for you you are the magician I mean so many times we had the empress come up for you had we had the queen of cups Come up for you king of pentacles i don't know if that's your energy or their energy this is like maybe the match that you want the person that you really want to match you or you feel is your your match you might have been happy with this person at one point you might have had some good times some fun times you might have felt emotional fulfillment in the beginning something happened a betrayal some sort of manipulation and now you're really questioning the whole thing like who the fuck are you Wow. Um, Virgo, if you would like to um, continue this reading, I am offering personal readings. There's a link in the description box below. Um, if this reading resonated with you, hit the like button. And uh, yeah, I'm wishing you the best in navigating this connection in November 2020. I think you're on the right path. You're really trying to see clearly who this person is. You're having a lot of doubts. You have a decision to make for sure. Seems like some communication needs to happen around how you're feeling. This person is all in. I don't know if they're all into you or if they're all into their fantasy. And I think that's what you're questioning as well. All right, uh, Virgo, I'm wishing you the best November. Um, take good care. Hello, friends. Welcome to this reading. This is a reading for Libra. I love reading for Libra. For November 2020, Sun, Moon, and Rising. If there is somebody that you've been thinking about, that you're connecting with, 
that you want to learn a little bit more about, want to learn a little bit more about the connection. This reading is for you. We're going to take a global perspective of the connection of the relationship. And we're also going to dive a little bit deeper and look into specifics. My name's Amanda. I'm at Luna Sync Tarot. Thank you for joining me. Let's sync up. All right. I've been shuffling your cards for a while here and just thinking about you. <clears throat> So, in the position of you and what you're contributing to the relationship, to the connection, is judgment, a reawakening, a rebirth. In the position of your connection, the person that you're thinking about in November is death. Wow. You know what? Yesterday, these two cards showed up in the very same position with a different deck. I was using the Rider Waite deck, and now I'm using the Gilded Tarot. And it was for either Aquarius or Virgo. So check those readings out if, uh, if this reading resonates with you as we move along. Judgment and death. So death is what uh, the energy that your partner, your connection is contributing, and that's an ending. It's a, a huge transformation. We have two cards of transformation here, judgment awakening, a reawakening, a calling, a rebirth of some sort. What precedes a rebirth is a death, is a transformation, major transformation. All right, in the position of the combined energies, we have the Knight of Swords, swift moving action, clarity of thought, sometimes impulsive, sometimes rash. That's typically when it's in the reverse. Coming in strong with the communication, having a lot to say, and saying it very forcefully. Sometimes this can be cutting. Sometimes it can be painful to hear. Typically, that's when it's in the reverse. Like I said, it's in the upright. It's that sort of truth. You see the, the owl in the tree? It's some sort of wisdom around communication, wise communication. And, you know, the nights are all about action. So it's like taking action in the way of communicating something very clearly, very strongly, very forcefully, very clearly. So that's your compo composite energies. That's what happens when the two of you come together in November. And then finally, in um, another night, in the position of the insight, we have the Knight of Wands. So again, more action around passion and creativity. The Knight of Wands is sometimes seen as the player card. But I'm looking exclusively at these two cards, these two nights, as some type of action being taken in November around this connection. Entrepreneurial, business, passion, creativity, networking, leadership, taking action in all of those ways, moving forward in all of those ways, taking that type of approach. And this is the insight. These are also personalities, I have to say. It could be that you, hmm, there are personal, like it could be that you and your partner are embodying these personalities. Like maybe you or he, she, she, he, they, I should say they, you or they are embodying this Knight of Wands energy and this Knight of Swords energy. Strong communicator. Very logical, analytical. And this one is passionate, creative, networks with others well, um, puts the ball into motion. This is the initiator. Yeah, some movement here. So after a death, there is a rebirth, there is a reawakening. I feel like this relationship is wakening up. At least for you, it is. Your partner has, your connection has the death card. Maybe they're still in the throes of this transformation or at the beginning of some sort of transformation. Maybe they think this relationship is over and you, you think, hey, it's not over yet. We, we still have a chance to um, to reconnect. There's a rebirth on the horizon where it comes to our connection. 
Let's clarify some of these cards. <clears throat> so Libra, what is this rebirth energy, this judgment energy that's happening for you that you're contributing here in November? My hands are whew, feeling a little awkward. Here we go. Oh, yeah, has to do with your love relationship. I get a sense that you do feel like this thing is not over. It's just another phase of the development of this relationship. We have a chance to begin again. This is a reckoning. This is a rebirth. This is a reconnection here in November. What is your partner contributing? What are they? What is this death card about? Oh, I'm going to keep shuffling because my hands are clumsy. And these cards are kind of sticky. I wonder if there's humidity in the air today. It's early in the morning. I haven't been outside yet. Oh, here we go. Oh, moving forward. Either moving forward in this connection or moving away from this connection because of the death card. Maybe this transformation that they are in the throes of is allowing them to move forward in a new way. But this is aligning your intention with your action. Maybe they want a transformation inside of this relationship, inside of this connection. Let's clarify some more. <clears throat> yeah, moving forward. This is the other card that came up. Moving forward after a time of repose and recovery. Feel like they still are here. They want to move forward. They will be moving forward, but right now it's about recovery. All right. I want to know what they're thinking about you in this connection. Let's get a little bit deeper here. What are they thinking about Libra? What are they thinking about you and who you are and what you're bringing to the table? What are they thinking about this connection in general? Oh. <clears throat> Ooh, Ten of Cups, ultimate emotional fulfillment. I feel like you are doing it for them. They see in you and in this connection, ultimate emotional fulfillment, ultimate joy. The Ten of Cups is like a celebration of a very emotional celebration. Like you have everything that you want, everything that you wish for materialized. Wow. So yeah, they're feeling you too. They're feeling this connection as well. Some big change has happened for them. How are you feeling about this connection here in November, Libra? How are you feeling about them? What do you think about them? How do you see them? Seven of Cups. Wow. Seven of Cups. I'm looking at the imagery in this card. It's like a passionate embrace. There's a turtle down here in the corner. Slow moving. Maybe this connection has taken some time to get off the ground and going. But that's okay. Earth energy feels, feels like that's appropriate for this connection. But it's passionate. It's really soulful. It feels very soulful. Like soulmate, soulmate connection. Seven of Cups in the traditional deck is having a lot of options. There's illusion and fantasy happening as well in that card. However, in this card, and we ask the question, how do you see this connection? How do you see this person um, in November? In this card, the imagery we see here is just very, it's like a soulful embrace. There's lilies behind them, beautiful white lilies, and a, a tortoise in the bottom right corner here. So patience, slow moving earth energy, thoughtfulness, soulful connection, soulmate connection, wakening up to a soulmate connection. Your partner, your connection is in this sort of throes of a deep transformation, but they do see you as a wish fulfilled as ultimate emotional fulfillment. And they do want to move forward. 
there's some alignment of opposing forces inside of them that needs to happen. But we do have these two cards down here in composite energies and also um, the insight of the relationship that's all about action. Taking action. And it's forceful action. Clear, thoughtful, wise, communicative, passionate, creative, connected action. Wow. Okay, let's pull a few more cards to clarify. Um, the composite energies. What is it like when the two of you come together? I want to know more beyond the Knight of Swords. What are the benefits of this connection? What are the beneficial energies? When you two blend your energies, what does that even look like? Here we go. Where'd you go? I think it went under my couch. Hold on one minute. Oh, no, it's right here. Good. Ooh, past love, past connection, past life. Lots of nostalgia. These two children playing here embody the essence of innocence and wonder. You know, the ability to just play and be submersed in your play. They have a rabbit, a cat, and a toad. Six is the number of achievement and victory. And again, this is the soulmate card. This is a past love coming back around. Beautiful. It's also uh, the energy of equal give and take, generosity and receptivity, giving a gift without expectation. So giving each other a lot of um, acceptance and forgiveness. Ooh, yeah. I feel like this is clarifying again the energies what what the energies are like when you two come together the composite energies there has been opportunity for patience right somebody's been waiting it's the energy of uh suspending suspension in order to receive illumination waiting for some sort of insight actively waiting for some sort of insight. I feel like you've had to wait for a while for this connection to come around. Again, I'm saying that again. I said it before. Somebody, there has been a time period of patience and waiting. The tortoise down here. Um, it's taken a while for this connection to get off the ground and go in, but now we have the chariot. We have two knights. All these cards are about moving forward, taking action, especially on the part of your connection. I get the sense that you know this is a soulmate connection. Or you're awakening to it quite rapidly. All right, what shall we do now? Let's clarify the Knight of Wands and the insight. <clears throat> Why is the Knight of Wands here in the position of the insight that is around this connection? The insight for this connection in November. Knight of Wands energy. Sometimes seen as player energy. Um, actually, you know what? Is it the Knight of Wands? I kind of see the Knight of Wands as player energy, but I think the Knight of Cups also has that reputation. I think the Knight of Cups is seen as like in love with love. Okay, morality popped out to clarify the Knight of Wands. Let go of any rigidity you have in your thinking about your... Well... What's about, I was going to say about your morality, but let me look deeper into this card here. I'll hold it up for you. Let's see how it connects here to the Knight of Wands. So the Knight of Wands follows his impulses, his creative, passionate urges and his impulses. And what have we been taught in our culture about our creative and passionate impulses? That they're dangerous, that we should lock them down in order to be moral people, right? Follow the rules. 
And what does that do for us when we do that? When we lock down our creative, passionate urges? Well, we become pretty rigid. We can become rigid in our judgments and our thinking, rigid in our movement and in our, our approach. All in the name of morality because we think it's good. We think it's good. We think it's safe. The Knight of Wands does not play it safe. The Knight of Wand, Wands moves forward passionately and creatively, listening to that voice of spirit that says, this feels good. I'm attracted to you. You know, like that voice that you have that's like, Ooh, I like this. This is exciting. Ooh, that's an interesting idea. Well, I want to explore that and see where that goes. It's that Knight of Wands energy. Tap into that. Watch out for any rigid thinking that you have around what is safe, what is morally good to do. Um, yeah, this is a, a message of safety understanding what it means to you or how this need for safety can imprison you sometimes and turn you to rigid ways. It's okay to listen to your passionate creative impulses and to take action around them. Wow. Okay. Libra. Let's see. Let's pull some cards of advice. Here, I do feel like you have some sort of soulmate connection here. Slow to awaken. Partner in some sort of transformation. They do see you as ultimate uh, emotional fulfillment. You are their wish come true. They do want to move forward. There's some alignment of opposing forces that needs to occur. They have been in a position of recovery and repose. This connection has taken a while to get off the ground and get going, though you do see very clearly that this is a soulmate connection, no doubt about it. Could be somebody from the past, past life. This is faded, a faded connection, a reawakening of some old connection. How can Libra... Um, most gracefully navigate these energies and this connection in November 2020. What message does Libra need right now? Oh, go outside. Get out there, Libra. Go outside. You've been indoors too long. Go outside. Get some fresh air. <laughs> That's what I need to do today. Cordelia. Cordelia. Let's read about Cordelia. Being cooped up is not the natural way for inhabitants of this exciting planet to live. Believe me, there's plenty to see and experience when you exit your four walls and roof. A daily venture outside will not only revive your spirit and soul, it will give you hope and faith in this planet's very existence and future. You'll see all the goodness that's in store within nature, the flowers ready to unfurl, the leaves that are sprouting, the birds that hop about, and even the wind that affectionately caresses you. Don't let another day go by without stepping outdoors into this most entertaining and excitement, exciting of environments. Various meanings of this card. Your manifestation will appear in May. There's a timing message. And or when weather is warmer. Spend time in nature. Change, a, change to a job that allows for more connection with nature. That would be nice. Practice envir environmentalism. Recognize the need for balance in your life, for more rest and play. So about Cordelia. This Celtic fairy goddess helps watch over the flowers that bloom in the spring and summertime. She is associated with the ancient sacred day Beltane, which is celebrated on May 1st to welcome the Celtic summer season. Call upon Cordelia to help you thaw out any situation or relationship that seems cold and dreary. Wow, there's several messages here. This revivement of this relationship could actually take place in the spring, in the uh, early spring for wherever you're at. 
call upon Cordelia to revive or to thaw out any situation that's been cold or relationship that's been cold or dreary. And I do get a sense with this death energy, this transformation energy, and this recovery ener energy that, um, and this morality energy, some of that is affecting this connection here. Go outside, change your routine, connect with nature. We have the tortoise over here, um, earth energy. Remember, earth energy, go outside. There's something about going outside. Maybe somebody works in a job that has them connected to the outdoors. Um, something about going outside is going to help this connection revive. Wow, Libra, it looks like this is a beautiful connection for you, and I'm wishing you the best in November. If this reading resonated, please hit the like button. Um, also, subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear how this relationship plays out for you in November. And if you'd like a private reading, I'm offering those right now. There is a link in the description box. Take good care. Hi Scorpio, welcome to your love reading for November 2020. If you're thinking about someone, if you're involved with someone, if you want to learn more about what this connection is all about, then this is your reading. I have already shuffled your cards off camera, so I'm going to give it a final shuffle and then we will sync up. My name's Amanda. I'm at Luna Sync Tarot. If you are new to the channel, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming around and listening to this reading. If it resonates with you, please share it with your friends. Like it, comment below. I love talking with you. If this is not your first time back, then welcome back. Thank you for coming back around. I am now doing personal readings, so if you are interested in one of those, just click the link below in the description box. I'm going to give this one last shuffle, and then we're going to get into this. Scorpio love. In November 2020, what do we have here for you, Scorpio? First, we're going to look at you and what you're bringing to the table. <clears throat> Seven of Pentacles. Putting in a lot of hard work and then observing your efforts. This is also a question about ROI, return on investment. I put in a lot of work here, and now I'm, I'm wondering if I'm going to get my return on investment. And this is a pivotal point because you're deciding whether you want to put in more work because it's going to be worth it, or if you need to redirect, go a different direction. So the Seven of Pentacles vibe is really about uh, observation, observing and asking that question. Do I want to put more work in here? Am I, am I focusing my energies in the right place? Am I going to reap the rewards of this connection or of this thing? What they're bringing to the table is the Queen of Wands. Ooh, sexy, sexy times. Queen of Wands is like, she walks into a room and everybody turns their head because she's freaking magnetic. Um, she might not be the most physically beautiful person in the world, but there's something about her. She radiates this, you know, this just like magnetic, gorgeous energy. She's confident. She's in control of herself. She knows how to use her energy wisely. Um, she makes shit happen. If you're thinking about um, something that, you know, like a pursuit, an endeavor, an initiative, a vocation, a job, a business that you've put a lot of work into and you're wondering what the next step is or if you, you should continue to pursue it. The Queen of Wands is not a bad person to have on your side. She has all the energy available to make it happen, and she knows how to leverage her network, the people that she's connected with, her connections, her community, in order to, like, she, she rallies all of them to make this thing happen. If this is, like, a love situation, then you're really looking at this connection right now in November 2020, and you're wondering if it's going to turn into the thing that you're hoping it's going to turn into. You have feelings that you've put a lot of work into it so far. Um, and the Queen of Wands is, she's just radiating, radiating, mag magnetic, confident energy. Nice. Composite energy, what you're, what the, happens when the two of you come together in November um, 2020 is the Three of Cups celebration, harmony. Three is a number of harmony and collaboration. So I do get the sense that you do collaborate well with one another. And there's a sense of like, it's fun. It's fun to do that. It's fun to collaborate. It's fun to be together. 
It's fun to blend your energies. It's harmony. It's harmonious. All right. And then finally, in the insight, we have the six of wands. Fuck, man. Victory. Achievement. <laughs> if you're wondering about whether you should continue in this relationship, the answer is yes. And in fact, I even doubt that you're wondering that because all of these all of this energy coming in the composite energy and in the insight is just like, yeah, no doubt. Could be that this is a new person. <clears throat> You've been involved in something. You've been involved in something. I'm not sure what it is. You know. Um, and you are at this place right now in November where you are observing something and you're wondering if you, you should put more effort into it. Um, or how you should put more effort into it. This Queen of Wands uh, character may be the thing that supports you in moving forward with this thing that you've been so focused on. Um, and the collaboration is just a beautiful, celebratory, harmonious, fun collaboration that helps you get to that point of success, that point of achievement that you've been striving for up to this point. That's the insight. People are seeing you and celebrating you, celebrating your achievements. Oof. Damn, Scorpio. This is beautiful. I want to know um, how you are seeing the Queen of Wands, how you are seeing this person in November. Now, this could be also, at the same time, we can ask the question, <clears throat> How do you perceive this connection? How do you see them? And how do you perceive this connection? Oh, the fool. New opportunity, new possibility, openness, receptivity, open heart, just walking off the cliff, totally trusting. How you perceive this connection? There's a sense of excitement, a sense of anything is possible. A sense of healing. See that snake wound around his ankle? Snakes are a symbol of healing and, and transmutation. Taking something to the next level. Transmuting one energy into another. Either you're seeing yourself. I mean, maybe you see both of you in this, this uh, fool energy. I, I must mention as well, fool is Major Arcana, the first guard zero. It's the void. Anything is possible, pure potential. That's how you are perceiving them, perceiving the connection in November. How are they perceiving you? There is union inside of this fool card because in the background, you can see two people making love. So it is about connection, emotional, sexual connection, union, <clears throat> physical, emotional connection. Anything is possible, pure potential. The Fool is all about having an adventure, dropping the mind, dropping all experiences from the past, and moving forward into the future like a tabula rasa, a clean slate, for what it's worth. Oh, gosh. Okay. I'm going to try that one more time, and let's focus. How is your connection viewing you and viewing your connection in November. What do they think about you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Four of Wands. Well, um, so many things to say about this card. <laughs> Four is the number of stability. So they do see this as a stable connection. There's stability here. There's also, you know, erotic excitement and erotic adventure. So they see you as very exciting and your connection is very exciting and maybe a little bit different, um, which excites them. They like that it's not your typical traditional ho-hum, you know, connection. Now, the four of wands is often seen as the marriage card. <clears throat> it's, uh, you know, like a, a celebration of of a relationship. It's sort of taking the relationship to the next level, uh, no matter where you're at in the relationship. So 
For example, if you're just talking, um, maybe you decide to um, be exclusive. Maybe if you've been in a relationship for a while, you get engaged. Maybe if you've been engaged, you get married. Um, maybe you move in together. It's taking the relationship to the next level in some way. And again, what they find so uh, intriguing about you is that there is this stability, but there's also this like this adventure and this excitement. And that makes sense for the queen, queen of wands for sure, because she needs that. She needs a lot of variety. She needs excitement. She needs a lot of um, stimulation, external stimulation. She thrives on that. She's like your quintessential um, extrovert, but also your quintessential energetic witch. So she thrives on energy, excitement, adventure. The Fool is all about having an adventure. All right, let's go. I'm going to put my my shit in a bag and <laughs> let's take off. Let's do this thing. So, I mean, so far it's looking really good here. Let's clarify the three of cups. What happens when the two of you come together inside of this collaboration? It's, um, it, it could be literally that you are about to have some sort of celebration with this person, that you are taking this relationship to the next level and there will be some sort of concretization of your relationship, some sort of ritual, some sort of party, some sort of celebration that um, allows you to take this relationship to the next level or solidifies this relationship in some way. Uh, we're gonna clarify this Three of Cups though. I just don't know what deck to use. Let's do this one. Let's do this one. Three of Cups. What happens when the two of you come together? <laughs> I love that. It's an offering of love. It's an emotional communication. Yeah, there's some. There's going to be some sort of exchange of love and some sort of exchange of an expression of love here. What happens when the two of you come together? Beautiful. And then finally, the insight, the Six of Wands, a victory, an achievement. This relationship is, it. this connection just seems, I just saw the Ten of Cups pop up. Um, ultimate emotional fulfillment. Um, it just seems like so strong and fiery and passionate and powerful and positive. Ooh, page of Wands. An emotional expression from the Page of Cups and a expression or a communication coming from the Page of Wands as well. Where it comes to passion and creativity, I almost get a sense that you all are working on something solid together, like a business partnership, that is also a love partnership, working on a project or an initiative with one another because the Page of Wands is entrepreneurial, learning something, investing time and energy into developing something, right? And then we have the Seven of Pentacles, which is all about being invested in something and, and um, also developing something, working hard at something and wondering what the next steps are wondering if you're going to get that ROI out of this thing. <clears throat> yeah, it's like the Page of Wands has turned into this Six of Wands. Look at how he is studying his wand. Oh, this is this thing that I am studying right now. This is what I'm learning. This is what I'm developing. This is what I'm investing my energy into. And then the Six of Wands, just I've invested my energy and I'm reaping the rewards. Coming full circle back around to the Seven of Pentacles energy. It's pretty great. All right. Let's pull a card of guidance for you, Scorpio. Doesn't seem like you need much guidance, but another insight would be nice. Let's use the Goddess. What is it called? Goddess Guidance Oracle Cards. You've probably seen these. They've been around for a while by Doreen Virtue. A card of advice or guidance for Scorpio as they move through this connection in November. It's looking great. We have two pages. Oh, easy does it. Well, there is a lot of energy here in this reading. Okay, there's no need to hurry or force anything to happen. Everything is occurring in perfect timing. 
All right. Well, there is, I mean, it does, this, in, this reading feels very, very fiery, passionate, creative, energetic. So if you're feeling like whew, a little overwhelmed by the energy, it's okay to take your time. Everything happens within divine timing. All right, let's read more about her though. Unag, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, Unag. Unag. <sighs> Nurturing a cause or a relationship is a long-term commitment and one that can't be rushed. This level of de de devotion, sorry, this level of devotion comes from a place of deep loving and concern. I care what happens to my planet and to my loved ones so much that I'm willing to stick with them through thick and thin. This isn't always easy, but to me, it's the only way to ensure that matters are resolved and healed. Wow. There's a strong message of like this. It's okay that this takes time. And that sometimes relationships take time in order to develop that level of devotion that comes from a really strong relationship, like sticking with somebody through thick and thin. This isn't always easy, but to me, it's the only way to ensure that matters are resolved and healed. I listen to the passionate stirrings of my heart. I reach out and take action to let my loved ones know that I deeply care about them. I take action to spur on my pet causes. Never mind what other people think, you will benefit by carrying through with your priorities. Carrying through with your priorities. You'll feel so good about yourself if you make time for the relationships and projects that truly count in your heart. Do what's important to you and do it with absolute devotion, but remember that there's no competition for your true life's purpose. So there's no need to worry, hurry, or feel that you have to force things to happen. Yeah, if there is this question of like, do I want to invest more energy in this project or in this thing? Which this is the first card that came out for you then absolutely. And I do feel like it's a project and it's a relationship and the two are intertwined in some way intricately. And this card is calling for devotion, devotion to both, to your ideas, to your projects and to your relationships. Okay. So various meanings of this card. Don't worry about your purpose or your goals. Make no sudden moves. Slow, steady progress is best right now. Ease into your new life instead of rushing into it. Do your new work as a part-time venture to begin with while slowly exiting your old career. Yeah, there's some sort of project, career, vocation that you're really focused on right now, wondering about. And I do get a sense that this person, this connection is coming in to help you to collaborate with you on it in some way and that it will be a successful collaboration. It's love and it's work. Let's read about Una, that's how you pronounce it, Una. The Celtic goddess Una is married to Fienbar, the leader of the Irish. I'm not even going to begin to try to pronounce this, but it's an Irish tribe. Una and her clan were some of the original inhabitants of Ireland. When the Gaels invaded their land, the Tutas didn't run or fight back. Instead, they transformed themselves into leprechauns. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I should try that. <laughs> Their ingenious solution allowed them to stay in Ireland in peace. Call, about, call upon Una for help with your own transitions and she'll guide you in creative and magical ways. Remember when we were talking about transmutation? This fool energy, that snake around his ankle, transmuting one energy into another. That's what that reminds me of when the uh, Tutas uh, transformed into leprechauns. Wow, Scorpio. You know what? This is a very auspicious reading. Whatever you've been working on and investing so much time and energy into, it is absolutely worth your continued effort and you will receive support in the way of your connection in November. It's a work-love thing. It's like either this person comes in to support you and then you fall in love or... Um, it's just, I, I get that, that duality there. It's work and it's love. They like 
You like that they're bringing this sense of adventure your way, first of all. Anything is possible, pure potential. And they like that you're both stable and able to have a good time and, and able to have an adventure and experience unique variety excitement. They like all of that. There is some sort of collaboration and expression of love when the two of you come together. It's like a new opportunity. The Page of Wands. I'm going to help you with this. That's the, that's the vibe I get. Like your partner, your connection comes in and says, yeah, let's do this. Let's make this successful. This is the insight. Scorpio, if you like this reading, hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. I do these love readings every month. I also do general readings for each sign every month, and sometimes I do pick a cards. I've been doing annual um, tarot readings for 2021, so I think I've done yours already. You might check that out. Uh, if you're interested in a personal reading, click the link below. I'd love to connect with you. I am wishing you the best in November, though it doesn't seem like you need any good luck here. It sounds uh, and looks just like a beautiful time for you. And I'm wishing you the best. Take good care. And it's just sort of like this relationship or this connection just had to be sacrificed in order for you to move forward confidently toward your destiny. I don't mean to sound corny, but that's what it feels like. It's like you are in hot pursuit of your destiny right now. Hey, Sages. Welcome to your love reading for November 2020. Thank you for joining me here. My name's Amanda. I'm at Luna Sync Tarot. If it's your first time here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for liking the readings. It really helps to elevate the reading and helps the reading to circulate. So I very much appreciate that. Um, I've shuffled your cards off camera, so I'm going to give them a last shuffle here. We're going to talk about you and what you're bringing to the table in November. We're going to talk about the person that you're connecting with or thinking about and what they're bringing to the table. We'll talk about the composite energies, what happens when the two of you come together. And we'll also talk about um, the insight, you know, what you really need to know about this connection. We'll pull clarifying cards all the way through and a few cards of prescriptive advice so that you can navigate this connection gracefully in November. Sagittarius. Love and relationship. If you're curious about somebody that you're interested in, if you're in a relationship, or if you just want to learn more about love, relationship, and intimacy in November for your sign, you're in the right place. Let's do this. Let's sync up. All right. Hey, everybody. Thank you for commenting uh, below. I selfishly really enjoy it uh, because I don't have a whole lot of uh, communication uh, these days. I don't, I think a lot of us kind of are struggling with that because of lockdown and quarantine. So it's really cool to connect with you. Um, so thank you. Thank you for commenting. In the position of you, ooh, we have the tower. Something that you stood on for quite some time that's been very foundational to who you are and how you, how you are is shifting to the ground right now and there's an opportunity to rebuild in the position of them is the five of cups something might have happened between the two of you a tower moment this person is grieving this person is grieving very regretful very full of sorrow um, really focused and fixated on what they've lost what has been lost in the position of the composite energies is the eight of cups yeah somebody walked away so this is about already very clear a, a connection here in november sagittarius where there was a big moment where something came to an end something uh, deconstructed um, and it was potentially surprising shocking it might have come from your side it might have been instigated by you um, come from your energy because it's showing up in the position of what you're bringing to the table. The connection is grieving this deconstruction, this tower moment, um, fixated on what has been lost and feeling very regretful and sad. There's been a walking away here in the composite energy. Somebody's walked away and there's a sense of like, I, 
I got what I needed to get out of this. And that's not, uh, I don't say that because I'm feeling that somebody's being selfish. Like, it's not like I got what I needed to get and now I'm gone. It's like something has come to its natural conclusion. And sure, you could stay. But after much thought and decision, you've decided to walk away because you've gleaned all the insights that you could glean from this connection, from this situation. And then in the position of uh, the insight is moving on. It's the chariot. Moving on powerfully and confidently, this is a lining of opposing forces in order to move forward in a very strideful um, confident, powerful way. We have two major arcana cards right out the gates here for you, Sagittarius, where it comes to your connection and love. Somebody's moving on. Somebody has walked away. Both parties might have walked away because that's the composite energy. Um, the insight is moving forward confidently. All right. Let's look at this tower moment. It's coming up in the position of you. I feel like it's something that you had either instigated. Your energy is in this place of the tower moment, or you brought it to the table. You brought it to the connection. <clears throat> Clarifying the tower moment is the emperor. Yes, absolutely. This is coming from your side, Sag. The emperor is the ruler of all things, right? They are the leader. They're the ultimate leader. Um, they, they create plans, they are strategic, they um, uh, delegate responsibility in order to execute their plan. Um, Rudy, I also get a sense that you're kind of stepping into your power. This is an opportunity for you to step into your power. And you see that. Let's learn more about them and how they're feeling about what's going on here. The Seven of Wands this card very defended now in this imagery we don't see that in the traditional deck the seven of wands is about defense guardedness meeting a challenge guarded against a challenge in this card it's a loving embrace it's almost like they're saying goodbye. And there is a, I get a sense of sadness coming from the woman, at least, when I look at that card. So a sense of guardedness here. They have the five of cups and they have the seven of wands. So feeling regretful, fe feeling grief and sadness when they think about what has been lost. And also feeling guarded, defensive. <clears throat> when you come together when your energies come together you get this eight of cups energy which is the, the which is walking away something that once brought you emotional fulfillment and satisfaction you are walking away from now it's just almost it sort of feels like inevitable like this is the next step, right? Is to move on, move on to the next thing. You've learned what you needed to learn. Let's learn more about your composite energies in November regarding this connection. I must feel like I should be using the Osho Zen deck. Let's switch decks for this. Composite energies in November for Sag, where it comes to this connection and love and relationship. Yeah, this tower moment, moment is bringing to you this to bringing you to this place of moving forward. The emperor, which came out to clarify you in the tower moment, reminds me very much of this emperor inside of the chariot. It's you. You're the one that's moving forward here. Okay, composite energies. For Sag. There we go. In November. 
This is what happens when the two of you come together. All right. Judgment beyond illusion. It's an awakening. Major Arcana, consciousness, the void, anything is possible, pure potential. Yeah, so, I mean, this thing that hurts probably does hurt to walk away from this thing for both, for both people is going to lead to an awakening that has to do just with your fate, what you, your purpose, your, the meaning of your existence, like what you are meant to do, how you are meant to move forward, the things that you are meant to cultivate and develop in order to reach your highest potential. And it's just sort of like this relationship or this connection just had to be sacrificed in order for you to move forward confidently toward your destiny. I don't mean to sound corny, but that's what it feels like. It's like you are in hot pursuit of your destiny right now. Sometimes you have to slough off the old um, in order to, you know, find your purpose, pursue your purpose. Let's pull a medicine card for you. Advice for Sagittarius as they move through this time in November with their connection. Move through this sort of challenging tower moment that is bringing them to their personal destiny. Pure potential. Anything is possible. Saying goodbye. Saying goodbye. A bunch fell out, so I'm going to keep going. wonder what you're moving towards. Rabbit. This is about fear. So mastering your fear. Let's read about rabbit. Three is a number of harmony. Oh, it's 30. Three plus zero is three. If you've pulled rabbit, stop talking about horrible things happening and get rid of what if in your vocabulary. This card may single, signal a time of worry about the future or of trying to exercise your control over that which is not yet in form, the future. Stop now. Write your fears down and be wi willing to feel them. Breathe into them and feel them running through your body into Mother Earth as a giveaway. So, yeah, I mean, if you are feeling fear about <laughs> letting this thing go and moving into your future, some Consciousness, awareness, and work around that fear would be beneficial for you. Let's learn more about the chariot. I want to know what this chariot is about. What are you moving toward? What are you moving toward, Sag? The insight. Moving on in a confident, powerful way. Really stepping into your seat of power. Stepping into your seat of power. Stepping into your power. Really seated in your power. We have the emperor showing up for you. We have the emperor showing up inside of the chariot, moving forward very powerfully. What is this chariot about? What are you moving toward? There we go. Oh, <laughs> a transformation. We knew that. You're moving toward a transformation, a major transformation, transformation of self, shedding a skin, shedding a, an identity. More please on the chariot. We know there's a transformation happening here. We saw the tower card. Ooh. Okay, witch. High priestess. This is just like connecting with your inner wisdom. Um, it's more than that, though. It's like, this is your magic. This is your magic. This is the thing that makes you unique and special. So whatever you're in pursuit of, it's powerful. It's like really connecting with that thing that you have to offer. And it comes from within. And it's deep. And it's mysterious. And it's magical. 
you have so many major arcanas here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Just five. Um, five is the number of conflict and change. So big change happening for you, Sagittarius, in November. Let's pull a few more cards. Actually, let's do the another guidance card from the Goddess Guidance Oracle cards. Cards by Doreen Virtue. I need a sip of water. I'm slurring. All right. Sag. If this reading is resonating with you, please hit the like button so other people can see the reading and uh, comment below. I'd love to hear how this is playing out for you in November. Big tower moment. Big tower moment. moment. Big transformation, a shedding of the skin, a moving forward in a very powerful way, Awa an awakening. God damn. <laughs> okay, so more guidance for Sag. If you're interested in a personal reading, the link is below in the description box. I'm doing those now. I'm very excited. Another card of guidance for Sag, please, for November 2020. Hmm. Hey guys, um, as I'm shuffling these and a card decides to come out, I wanted to um, say that on Monday, it's what is it? It's Saturday here right now. It's November 14th. Um, I'm in New Mexico and we're about to go on lockdown uh, on Monday. So in a very similar way to how everything was in March when we first went on lockdown. I guess cases are rising, hospitalizations are rising. I think that this state is worried about the, the being able to meet the need, critical care beds um, in a hospital, the hospital setting in hospitals. Ooh, white Tara, sensitivity, beautiful. You are becoming increasingly sensitive Avoid harsh relationships, environments, situations, and chemicals. White Tara. Let's read about her, and I will hold her up again for you to see, because this is a truly gorgeous card. <clears throat> White Tara. I love this. I love the colors. As you've purified your inner world of thoughts, actions, and intentions, it's natural that you seek purity in your outer world as well. This is to acknowledge your heightened sensitivity, which is as real as it seems. You've stripped away the outer protective layers of unneeded defenses, which blocked your psychic and spiritual awareness. Now you're on the path of ascension. I, f I f really feel that for you. Path of ascension. Path of Ascension. Look. Sensitivity. <clears throat> now you're on the path of Ascension, which calls for heightened awareness. And with this awareness comes new levels of sensitivity to the impure and harsh. Your body is a trustworthy instrument of measurement of your tolerance level. Steer clear of that which your body signals you to avoid. Take excellent care of your body and it shall serve you. Whatever this tower moment brought about, we know what it brought about. It brought about a huge transformation and a sloughing off of the old, possibly a letting go of a connection that maybe meant something really important to you, brought you emotional fulfillment at one point that you had to just simply let go of because it didn't, it didn't align. It did not align with the purpose that you were pursuing whatever purpose this is whatever thing that you're pursuing here it has to do with like something deep and mysterious and magical it's like your own unique magical qualities developing those or bringing those to the table in some way maybe you're you're starting a business um around i don't know tarot reading or astrology or 
um, medicine, herbs, you know, it's like, it's magical. It's a magical business. It's a magical pursuit. Um, big transformation. Transformation is all over this reading, right? And a huge awakening, like an awakening to your purpose. And this might be something that you've been sleeping on for quite some time, but all possibility and pure potential is available to you in this moment. And it is because you are walking away from the old. You are releasing the old. Let's keep going. Here are the various meanings of white Tara. Acknowledge, your, acknowledge and honor your sensitivity. Take steps to protect yourself from negativity. Avoid chemicals. Steer clear of situations with loud noise, crowds, violent media, and other triggers. And here's about white Tara. Tara. White Tara is an aspect of Tara, a female Buddha and Hindu mother creator. The many female faces of the Buddha and mother creator are represented as various colors of Tara. White Tara represents purity, maturity, and compassion. The eyes on her hands, her hands, feet, and forehead allow her to be aware of all prayers. She helps us to live long and peaceful lives. Wow. Beautiful. Sag, if this reading resonated with you, please hit the like button, share with your friends, comment below. I'd love to hear how this is playing out for you. What is this magical pursuit? I'm really curious about that. All right. I'm wishing you the best in November. Um, please take good care and uh, yeah, take good care of yourself. Avoid harsh chemicals and places and loud noises and triggers. Really take good care of yourself right now. All right. Talk to you later. They are perceiving you as somebody who is capable of taking action for sure. I'm getting like a fiery, passionate, masculine energy. They really think that you can sweep them off their feet. Okay, the word eros keeps coming to my, my head, but I'm having trouble putting words around it. So just know that eros keeps coming up. Eros, eros, eros. Hello, my dears. Welcome to your love reading for November 2020. This is for Capricorns. Capricorns in love, November 2020. If you are thinking about someone, if you are involved with someone, if you're thinking of becoming involved with someone, or you are simply interested in love, relationship, and intimacy in November, this is your reading. You're in the right place. Thank you for joining me. My name's Amanda. I'm at Luna Sync Tarot, and uh, I'm happy to be here with you. I have already shuffled your cards off camera quite a bit. I'm going to give it one last shuffle and then we will sync up. Find out all about love for you. We're going to be looking at you, what you're bringing to the table, them, what they're bringing to the table, what happens when the two of you come together in terms of your energy, your composite energy, and we will also look at an insight for the connection. <clears throat> we'll pull clarifying cards all the way through and a card of advice. So let's do this. In the position of you, we have the justice card, a major arcana card right out the gates. Justice, some sort of truth. Legal profession, military profession, some sort of lawsuit, um, court case. Something being ruled in your favor. Some truth coming to light. All right, in the position of them and what they're bringing to the table is the Queen of Swords. Ooh, this lady is all about seeking the truth, seeking the wisdom. And there's no, um, what's the word? There's no wiggling around the truth. It's very clear. It's very concise. You know where you stand with this person. Again, could be a person in the legal professions, in the military. Um, uh, the word dogmatic came to my head. She's inviting in the truth. Look at her holding up her soul, her sword of truth. I almost said soul of truth. Could be that this person does have a soul of truth. Like this is the most important thing to them is honesty, the truth, the one true thing. And with her other hand, she's inviting in the truth. She's offering the truth and inviting in the truth at the same time. There's a single bird in the sky there. Birds represent wisdom for the most part. That's your partner in 2020 or your connection in 2020. Composite energies, celebration, marriage, uh, foundation, solid foundation, strong foundation, 
um, taking it to the next level, taking the relationship to the next level. Awesome. The insight, the hierophant, union, right? This sometimes represents marriage. It's definitely union. It's uh, leadership, spiritual leadership inside of community or leading a community to their spirit, to their spirituality in a spiritual way, um, teaching. But this is the card of Taurus and it is the card of union or marriage or um, commitment. We'll say that. That's the insight. This relationship connection is ultimately leading to a commitment of some sort and it's solid and it's foundational and it's spiritual. You two are coming from the, the same energy. Look at this. This is you. Look at this figure holding up the sword of truth. And this is your connection. The queen holding up the sword of truth. Making an offer. Balanced. Balanced wisdom. Because look. Holding the scales here. Some truth connects the two of you. Something based in truth connects the two of you. Let's clarify. This is looking good so far, Capricorn. Okay, I'm gonna work with the Tarot of Sexual Magic. Okay, so when you see or perceive this person, this connection, what stands out to you I'm going to flip some cards around. They were flipped up when I started to shuffle. What stands out to you about this connection? What is your perception of this connection in November 2020? The Empress. Ooh, lovely. So either you're perceiving the person that you're involved with in this very beautiful um, Empress energy. She is a queen. He is a, a queen. You know, the um, gender is fluid. So um, really has this sort of elevated status. And it's a beautiful, like, abundance that surrounds them. A nurturing energy just um, in your power. In your power. You perceive this connection. And this is how your person came out as really this person is really sitting in their power sitting in their power very powerful and attractive energy here all right how do they perceive you how do they perceive you and the connection with you you are the justice card oh i'm gonna keep going because a bunch flew out there you are the Justice card, Major Arcana coming right out the gates. We have two Major Arcana in a pool of four cards. So there's something transformative, um, faded about this connection that does seem to be going in that direction of commitment, in the direction of some sort of elevation of your relationship. This is taking it to the next level and then concretizing it, solidifying it. I'm looking at the Hierophant. I'm looking at the Four of Wands, and I'm looking at the Hierophant. There we go. That's what I'm looking for, more clear. This is how they perceive you and your connection. We have the Knight of Wands. Ooh, I love this card. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. The Knight of Wands, and we have the, <laughs> the Knight of Swords. Wow. So they are perceiving you as somebody who is capable of taking action for sure. A knights are all about action. They're about um, planning, strategy, implementing a plan, taking action around a plan or a strategy. Um, very, uh, I'm getting like a fiery, passionate, masculine energy. Um, the Knight of Wands is very passionate and takes action around um, entrepreneurial efforts like business, um, ideas, initiatives, endeavors, um, anything creative, anything sort of like it comes up from your like your, you know, your root chakra, you know, anything like foundational, passionate, creative, kundalini energy, the knights take action around that. 
they really think that you can sweep them off their feet in some way. We have two knights and what do knights do? They come in and they take care. They sweep somebody off their feet. Okay, the word eros keeps coming to my, my head, but I'm having trouble putting words around it. So just know that eros keeps coming up. Eros, eros, eros. Um, Knight of Wands, if we look at the imagery in this image, this one comes up quite a bit, I'm noticing. So here we, we have the Empress. This is how you perceive your connection. Here we have the Empress in this card as well. Absolutely comfortable with exposing themselves, with showing who they are, with being vulnerable in their physical um, expression and comfortable in their body. And here is this night, this is how they're perceiving you, that is just totally down to explore and devour this empress woman, this empress. So they perceive you as a knight, somebody who's willing to and able to come in and take action and sweep them off their feet. And they love that you see them in this Empress energy because they know that's who they are. Like you're really seeing who they are and they like that. Um, witnessing who they really are, their quintessential energy. Let's clarify the, let's clarify the four of wands. So this came up in your composite energy, Capricorn. I want to clarify that with the Osho Zen Tarot. This speaks to stability, security, strong foundation, stable foundation, some sort of celebration, some sort of ritual. It's often um, called the marriage card. A ritual to take the relationship to the next level. Look at these two figures. They're both here together, standing together. In some sort of celebration and in community. It could be that in November you are actually getting married because here we have like the, the Hierophant, which is like the priest figure. Here we have a celebration of two people inside of a community. There are people in the background. The Hierophant is um, somebody who leads a community. So it could be that you're actually coming to the Hierophant in November to, to concretize your your commitment to one another we are the world this is beautiful this is 10 is a number of completion there's some finality here something is like like i said concretizing like solidifying um this is like coming to that point in your relationship where you know you're moving forward together. There's a finality around something in the past and a moving forward into a new beginning. This also speaks of legacy. This is uh, in the traditional deck, this is the 10 of pentacles. This is like generational wealth, like building that thing together, building wealth for your family, building that home, building the things that are gonna last for quite some time and will support and anchor your relationship getting to a place where you can share your gifts and your wealth with others, with your family, with your community. There's a strong community vibe happening here. And this is clarifying the four of wands. Wow. The insight, the hierophant. Clarify the hierophant, please. For Capricorn in November, 2020. Ooh, silence. This card keeps popping out, so I'm gonna pull another one. It's uh, got a strong energetic pull this month. <sighs> 19, 17. Silence. This is healing. This is turning within to tap into that universal consciousness. This is a big moment. This is a big moment for you. I get the sense that like all is available to you and this moment. It's almost like the zero, the void, like everything is available to you and possible, all potential. And silence will facilitate that gleaning process. 
Wow. Okay, let's keep going. I'm going to clarify the Hierophant in, um, really feeling that card, <laughs> in November for Capricorn and their connection. Let's clarify the Hierophant. This commitment, this union, a coming together inside of community to solidify something, to learn like deeper truths. To learn deeper truths, deeper spiritual truths. I feel very safe with the Queen of Swords. That's your, your connection in November. Um, you know where you stand with her. There's no game playing. Ooh. Wow. Four. We got another four. The Rebel. Breaking the ties of convention. Throwing off conditioning. Listening to your true inner self, your passions, your creativity, and following them. And if it means you have to break out of social expectations, that's what's going to happen. That's what that means. You have this high vision at this time. This rebel energy is a gorgeous energy. It's clarifying the Hierophant. So the Hierophant is very traditional. Look, this is a four. Yeah. The rebel is a four and the Hierophant is a five. Um, the Hierophant is very traditional, sometimes rigid, um, really bound by society, um, practices, uh, dogma, uh, institutions, systems, right? The rebel is the exact opposite. They do not operate according to what other people think. Um, they go their own route. They follow their own path. They listen deeply. They listen deeply to their own inner stirrings. And they use that information as they move along in their life. So there's some interesting play. And you, you might know better than me. You probably know better than me what I'm talking about. Um, I'm sure you know better than me what I'm talking about, because it's you. Um, but there's some interesting interplay between the Hierophant and the Rebel. So the Hierophant symbolizing um, union, marriage, commitment, but also symbolizing um, systematic uh, practices, institutions, dogma, somewhat rigid um, inside of like a, a system that involves a lot of people. And then the rebel, which is like a throwing off of expectation, a throwing off of conditioning and really listening within to determine what your own inner truth is and then following that light. This takes a lot of courage. And then there's this, this card that um, speaks to silence. Like all, all of the information, all of the energy is available to you at this time. Look at the power of that moon in the third, the position of the third eye. All is available to you, all knowing, omniscient. And the call is to be silent. The call is to go into the void. To understand the possibility and the potential. Dang. How many major arcana cards do we have here? This is a big thing for you, Capricorn. We have one, two, three, four. We have four, no, five. We have five major arcana cards here. This is a big transformation for you. This is a big time. Lots of energy available to you right now. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's see. What else should we do? Um, I want to pull two cards, um, guidance cards or advice cards for you, a crystal healing wisdom oracle card and a goddess card. Let's work with the goddess cards first. I've really been digging these go goddess cards recently, and I think I'm going to do some research and find a different goddess deck. I am resonating with these goddesses. So some guidance for you, some deeper insight for you as you navigate this connection in November. 
and these big energies in November. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Funny. Um, Sieg or Siege. Silence. Quiet time. Take some time alone to rest, meditate, and contemplate. Really feel like you're shoring up. It's like a shoring up of your energy, but also a um, developing your ability to receive your, your receptivity. Going into a receptive state in order to be able to glean the answer that you need. Like glean that information that is available to you. And it just involves you going into a receptive posture um, in order to, to get it, to, to glean it. Siege. Okay. Let's pull a crystal healing wisdom oracle card for you, Capricorn. I'm smiling because I like this queen energy for your connection. We have the queen of swords and we have the empress. And then they perceive you in this knight energy, taking action, coming in, sweeping them off their feet. It's very romantic. And there's a, a quality of adoration. Um, a quality of adoration. Let's keep going here. So some advice for Capricorn as they move through this time. Ooh, hell yeah. Dang. Black tourmaline. Look at that. Number one. Yes. Let's read about black tourmaline. Protection. I'm going to hold this up so you can see it. Protection. Black tourmaline absorbs negative energy and affords excellent energetic protection, enhancing your physical vitality. You are adaptive, adjusting to new places and new situations. You have clarity of thought and analyze situations rapidly. Let go of overcautiousness, but stay protected. You sense it when people wish you ill. You may be carrying a family or past life curse, creating dis-ease. Recognize the negative thoughts and actions harm others. Recognize that negative act, thoughts and actions harm others and yourself. Divination. Strengthen your protection. Maybe that's what this is about. Strengthening your protection. I'm going to hold all these up. Look at these quiet time cards with tourmaline there. Strengthen your protection. Consolidate plans and be realistic. You'll soon see the way through obstacles. Ensure you are well protected. Ill wishing or envy may be directed your way. Neutralize bad energy without harm to others. Watch your thoughts, attend to practical matters, be generous and give others freedom. The healing insight is neutralizing toxic energies from your environment, shielding yourself from ill wishing or EMF stress. That's electromagnetic field stress and detoxifying your body supports well-being. The frequency is earthy. The chakra is earth star and base. The timing is Capricorn. And the soul path is appropriate energy shielding and enhancement. Wow. Now listen, I did not get an energy of somebody wishing you ill at all in this reading. However, that message of self-protection, self-shielding um, is, is very strong and reinforced by this call for you to get quiet and take time and to become receptive. So for what it's worth, black tourmaline, you might pick yourself up some black tourmaline, work with it a little bit, protection. All right, Capricorn, listen, if this reading resonated with you, please hit the like button. If you'd like a personal reading, I'm doing those now. The link is below. Um, comment. Let me know what's going on for you in November. I'm really curious about this connection. It looks very positive. Um, and uh, I'm wishing you the best in November. If you are about to become married, congratulations. If you're about to take your relationship to the next level, congratulations. Um, that is very lovely. And uh, yeah, have a great November. Hello, all you Aquarians out there in the world. 
This is your November 2020 love reading. Thank you for joining me. My name's Amanda. I'm at Luna Sync Tarot. If you are thinking about somebody, if you are in a relationship, if you want to be in a relationship with somebody that you have your eye on, somebody you've been talking to, if you want to learn more about the connection, what they're thinking about you, um, this is your reading. If this reading resonates with you, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. Comment below. I love talking with all of you. All of your support helps this channel to elevate, my work to elevate, and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And thank you for being here. So I have shuffled your cards, Aquarius. <clears throat> Let me give it one last shuffle. And we're going to dive in. We're going to take a global view, and we're going to dive in and take a, a very detailed, in-depth perspective as well of this connection that's happening for you in November. In the position of you and what you're contributing is the Seven of Cups. A little bit of confusion there. Indecision. In the position of them and what they're contributing is death. Some sort of ending. They're um, contributing a completion energy. In the position of the composite energies, we have the Ace of Wands reversed. In the position of the insight, wow, we have the Ace of Swords reversed. Wow, wow. Okay, hmm, Aquarius. For you, a lot of like mental, emotional confusion. Feeling like you're not seeing things very clearly. A uh, lack of clarity, for sure. Nothing feels quite real here. A lot of illusion. A lot of perceived choices, options, emotional opportunities, but not a whole lot of clarity around any of them. A uh, sense of indecision. What they are contributing is it's over separation, disconnection, an ending of some sort. The composite energies, Ace of Wands reverse. Something did not get up off the ground here. Neither one, or one of you are feeling the spark of this. A lack of energy, a lack of creative energy, a lack of passion. In the insight is the Ace of Swords. An idea that never got off the ground, a way of thinking about something that is a little bit perverted. When I say perverted, I don't mean like sexually perverted. I mean, <laughs> it could be that. Um, <laughs> um, an idea that is just, um, it's in the negative. It could be a negative idea. It could be negative communication. It could be um, something was said that was very cutting, very negative, had a very negative effect. That's in the insight. Let's clarify this, okay? So let's see, <clears throat> where do we start? How you feel about what's going on with you in this indecision and this confusion? How do you feel about them? How do you feel about them and their relationship and the connection? Oh, dear Lord, this has been happening all morning, just dropping piles and piles of cards. What is this indecision about and how you feel about them? Ooh, an ending, 10 of wands. 10 is a number of completion, um, a final ending, a final ending of some passionate connection. Major passion happening here. And then we have the judgment card, a rebirth. Is this what you want? You want a rebirth? You, I get the sense that you know this came to an end. This passionate, it, wow, passionate love affair is experiencing an ending. And there's so much like mental and emotional confusion happening for you. There is like some sort of faded, this is like a faded, a faded ending and new beginning. You know, it's like, <clears throat> am I going to go to heaven or not? Am I going to go to heaven or am I going to go to hell? 
it's that feeling, it's that vibe. What about for them? How are they seeing you? How are they seeing this connection? They're standing firmly in the death energy. Did they bring it about? Were they the ones that said, hey, it's over? Ooh. Devil energy. Toxicity. Some sort of toxic action. Some sort of manipulative. Um, addiction. Obsession. Being bound and tied and oppressed to some thing, some external thing. This is clarifying them. This is how they see the connection. How they are viewing you. Are they viewing you as, you know, toxic? Or are they toxic? I feel it like they brought about this ending because they are standing firm in this death energy. Clarified by the devil. Ooh. Let's keep going. What is this thing that didn't get off the ground? Like when the two of you come together, we have a, a false start is what I'm hearing. A false start of some sort that has to do with passion, has to do with creativity. <clears throat> Let's clarify that. You know what? I don't want to use that deck. I'm going to use the dark mirror. Let's clarify the ace of wands in reverse. This is what your energy is like when it blends what is this Ace of Wands in reverse about? The temple of my body. What the fuck? The temple of my body. This really reminds me a lot of the death energy. Like, get a sense that the connection that you had was very, very, very sexually passionate in the beginning. And it came to some sort of conclusion at the height of the passion. And it's like this person did it for you physically and sexually or vice versa. There was like some like major satisfaction happening here. Like they really got what it is that you liked, um, saw your body as a temple, vice versa. They were, they were like, they really were the, the, sexual match for you like what am I trying to say like the like checking every box is what I'm hearing they checked every box in terms of like your your fantasies your sexual fantasies your sexual needs your physical needs temple of my body but then the ace of wands is in reversed when you two come together like, that's a false start. That's like, you know, this thing not coming to fruition. I'm getting a push and pull energy here, which is one of, I'm so turned on by this person. You know, they're, they're checking every box for me, um, meeting all of my needs physically, but that's it. And it's... It can't be it. It can't be all, right? Because it's if it's just that, then it's, it's also feeling kind of toxic. Like the fact that they do check all your box boxes feels a little toxic, obsessive, addictive, right? Ace of Swords. Let's move on to the Ace of Swords. It's a negative idea. It's the insight. It's like negativity in the in the mental realm. What is this Ace of Swords about? We have two aces in the reverse. These typically imply new beginnings, but when they are in the reverse, it's like an aborted beginning. It's like not gonna happen. It's not getting off the ground. Here we go. Parasite. Ooh. Yeah, I get a sense that one or the other, both, maybe them, just feeding. This this connection is just about feeding off of one another in some sort of like toxic way, some sexual way. That feels probably really good, temple of my body. Um, but that's all it's about. It's about sort of this 
<clears throat> leeching of energy through this act, through, you know, the sexual connection of sort. All right. I want to clarify more about how it is that you feel. What are your next steps here? I do get a sense that you're confused. You're feeling confusion. Uh, three of uh, swords just popped up. That's betrayal, manipulation, heartbreak. Um, so, and then we have the judgment card, like an ending, a new beginning. Am I going to heaven? Am I going to hell? I kind of feel like that's how you feel about this connection. Like Jesus, it feels like heaven, but it also feels like hell. You know, we got this ooh, death and devil energy for the person that you're connecting with in November. What are your next moves here, my dear Aquarius? Shit. This is an intense connection. Queen of Swords, cutting it out. Cutting it out. I mean, if you're experiencing confusion and illusion and uncertainty, you won't be for long. The Queen of Swords is all about clarity and making very sharp, pointed decisions. She don't fuck around. Yeah. She's looking right at this devil energy. <laughs> I love it. She's like, oh no. I'm going to cut you right out, buddy. How are they? What are their next moves towards you in November? <laughs> what are they going to do? He's holding this giant dildo. I think that's really hilarious. What is that even supposed to mean? I mean, he's like fascinated with it too. Look at him looking at it. I think he's in love with his own phallus. It's like the center of his identity. What are they gonna do in November? What are what are their actions toward you in November? They might come at you, but you're holding that sword up like you better come at me correct. And even if you come at me correct, I still might cut you. It might have felt like heaven in the beginning, and then it turned into a very hellish, emotionally hellish situation for you. What are their actions toward you? Mm. <clears throat> Eight of swords reversed, four of cups upright. They're waiting for you to come toward them and make them an offer. Or they feel like if they make you an offer, you might refuse it. Get the sense that they prefer you to be confused. They prefer you to be wrapped up in illusion, wrapped up in limited negative beliefs. I gotta say I'm not liking this person very much right now. I'm trying to remain neutral, but I, uh, I'm not getting a good vibe from this connection here. Um, you might have thought that it was, it was probably something that you'd never even experienced before with this person. These feelings, temple of my body, right? This type of connection, maybe you had never even experienced before and you were like, whoa, what is this? This is incredible. And then it quickly turned into a toxic situation that made you feel very fucking confused, right? Is this heaven? Is this hell? Quickly turned into an emotional, um, an emotional hell. You began to learn that this person is really completely wrapped up with using sex. Their identity is wrapped up with their ability to be a good lover, be, you know, in their ability to satisfy you satisfy others uh, completely wrapped up in their sexual identity obsessed with sex and that's where they're getting their energy from right and they and you kind of felt like well i i think they're just using me sexually to get high sort of addicted to sex sexual addiction all right let's pull a card of guidance for you as you move through november November 2020. Uh, I think I'm going to work with the Osho Zen. 
Um, if this reading is resonating with you, Aquarius, please hit the like button. Um, all of your, your likes and your comments help to elevate my channel and uh, allow me to keep doing these types of readings for you, which I love to do. Um, if you're interested in a personal reading, I'm offering those now too. There is a link in the box below. Guidance for Aquarius as they move through this connection in November 2020. Yeah, strong, strong passion, strong sexual addiction, obsession. Is this heaven? Is this hell? I feel wonderful and I'm satisfied, sexually satisfied physically, but I also feel very confused. Okay. So this is guidance for you as you move through this connection. Complacency, <clears throat> laziness, ordinariness, friendliness. Reach out to your friends for support in November. They might be able to and, and probably will be able to support you during this time and hear um, what it is that you're going through and relate to it offer you some support. Don't be afraid to be alone and have those solitudinal experiences with yourself. They might seem mundane and boring, but if you um, cultivate this way of seeing those ordinary moments as beautiful and spectacular and gifts, then that will help you move through this as well. It does feel like a disconnection energy here. The death card is coming through really strong. Um, beware of complacency here. This person feels very, you know, like everything's all good. I've got every, you know, like I don't need to move. I don't need to make any actions, but you can see their world is shattering around them. So step into the, the present moment. Be aware that you will have to make some decisions. Um, whether you engage with it or not is the difference between struggling through it or um, encountering it, uh, navigating it with grace. All right, Aquarius. Wow. I'm wishing you the best in November 2020. Um, it looks like uh, you have a bit of a challenge here in the way of your connection. Um, it does seem like you're on the right path. You have some insights about what's happening here, which is a really good thing. And uh, I know that you can navigate this with, with grace. Call on support from your friends. Don't be afraid to spend some alone time and try to really appreciate those moments. You know, see the beauty in those moments. You are going to have to take some sort of action because this shit's shattering around you right? It's happening, whether you engage with it or not. Again, confusion, lack of clarity, needing to make a decision, having many options available to you, but not really seeing them very clearly. A lot of illusion. There is a reawakening, a rebirth happening here. All right, Aquarius, take good care. There's this like temptation here in this reading um, wanting to give in to that passion, wanting to give into that kundalini energy, that energy of your libido. Like, I want to have this, like, spark. I want to experience the magic of life. I want all of my senses to be engaged. And this energy of, like, hey, but you should probably tame your baser instincts. You should, like, get in control of your libido at this moment because there's something that you are not seeing about this connection. Hey, Pisces. Welcome to your love reading for November 2020. Thank you for joining me. Welcome back if you are returning. And if you're new to this channel, thank you for joining us. All right. So I have been shuffling your cards off camera. I'm going to give your cards a, another shuffle here. And then we'll sync up. We're going to be looking at you and what you're bringing to the table. We'll look at your connection and what they are bringing to the table. We will look at the composite energies and we'll also take a look at the insight for the connection in November. If this reading resonates with you, please take a moment to hit the like button. It really helps to elevate my work and helps others to see the reading, helps to circulate the reading. Consider subscribing if you're so called and also leave a comment if this is resonating with you. I love chatting with you. I love hearing how, you know, 
how these different scenarios play out in different people's lives. So, all right, one last couple. Let's sync up. All right. Cutting the deck three ways. In the position of you, we have the Page of Swords. Looking into something, maybe observing someone. Research, study, learning. The pages are apprentices. So they're really in that um, beginning phase of learning about something. Um, I always think about it as learning about something that will become they'll become very masterful in. It's a craft of some sort. Uh, maybe not a craft, but maybe for the page of swords would be like a <clears throat> developing your thoughts around something like academic, some some uh, philosophy, some thought form. In the position of the other or your connection in November is the Queen of Wands. Ooh, archetypal energetic witch. She knows how to use her energy to get what it is that she wants. She's also highly connected, highly networked, knows how to leverage her network in order to um, uh, get what she wants, in order to execute her plan, implement her plan. Very sexy very magnetic. She's the woman or person who walks into the room and all eyes turn. So your connection is pretty freaking passionate, fiery, creative, magnetic, sexy. Like I really feel like you're observing all of this about your connection here in November. There is a slight imbalance of maturity levels, energies. Um, the page is more immature or younger. Could be like actually, in actuality, literally younger than the Queen of Wands. She has sort of mastered her energy, mastered her craft, and this one is learning about their craft, learning about their energy. Wise use of energy on the part of the Queen. Let's look at your composite energies. What happens when the two of you come together in November? The moon. Ooh, there's something unseen, something hidden, something secretive. Not all the information is available at this moment. It could be that you come together in November around the time of a full moon. But yeah, secrets. In the reverse, it's sometimes about deception, manipulation. Um, yeah, the subconscious. So that's what happens when the two of you come together in November. Interesting. And the insight is the Knight of Pentacles. This is a slow-moving connection. It could be long-term. It could be more stable than any other connection. But it's slow-moving. It requires thoughtfulness, methodic, methodical, a methodical approach. Um, Knight of Pentacles. It is about action. But it's slow moving action. So that's the insight. Be prepared for that in November. The Page of Swords likes to move fast. Sometimes impulsive, sometimes rash. This is you and what you're bringing to the table. Maybe you're observing this person on social media or you're observing them at work. You're observing them at play. Um, because the Page of Swords really is somebody who's doing a lot of watching watching someone, watching something, observing something, researching something, someone. The two are looking out from one another. Actually, they were like this. The page is looking this direction. The queen is looking that direction. So there's a, a slight disconnect happening here, both in the way of what you're actually looking at and the directions that you're headed, but also um, a sort of a I want to use the word mismatch in your energy, you coming or one person, you know, sometimes these are like flipped. So I'm trying to use, I'm trying, I'm trying to neutralize my language here and not say you and they, but it, speak in terms of energies because a lot of the times these energies are flipped. There's an energy of learning something, sort of a, a, a slightly more immature energy just at a different phase in their development. They're at the phase of learning and beginning a new craft, beginning to learn about something. The queen is an energy of I've learned this thing and now I'm using it very wisely, 
right? I know how to contain this and I know how to distribute this um, very expertly. So it's a, an apprentice slash expert type connection here. Let us clarify some of these cards, Pisces. How are you perceiving this connection in November? How are you perceiving this person? How are you perceiving this connection in November? When the two of you come together, you get the moon. Whoa. Okay. What do we got here? Well, these cards just keep coming up time and time again. I swear to God, I shuffled this deck. Lots. Um, Five of Pentacles, King of Swords. This is how you're perceiving this connection. You see this connection is uh, ideally romantic. You know, very, uh, it's very, look, all the symbols in this card here, the Five of Pentacles, just point to like this ideal romantic love. They're on a balcony. They're embraced and kissing. There's flowering foliage around them. There's that violin. It's all ornate and it's all beautiful and it's all just like what you would imagine, maybe what you like the Disney films, right? <laughs> and maybe what you were taught that love is when you were younger. And then you grow up and you get into a few relationships and you realize, oh, this is actually a little um, challenging and difficult. And love is actually a lot deeper and takes a lot more focus and awareness and presence and commitment. And it's not always this. Sometimes you like very seldom inside of a committed relationship. <laughs> is it this? Um, and when it is this, you want to like just embrace the shit out of that. Right. But often, more often it's, you know, it's, it's. It takes a lot of uh, commitment and dedication and focus and presence. Um, so there's some sort of idealism around this connection that you're having where it comes to romantic love. You know, um, maybe some unpacking of uh, fantasy, some unpacking of your perceptions of what love is would be helpful. King of chalices. I'm not trying to dissuade you from just loving this up because I, I think when it, when it feels this way, just, you know, enjoy it. It could be about enjoying love in this particular way. But whenever I see this card, I have that, I have that uh, interpretation. So I, I have to mention it. The king, I said king of swords, but this is the king of cups. The king of cups. This is how you perceive this person or this connection. Oh, the king of cups is like just... I don't know. He's one of my favorite kings. He's emotionally mature. He's very compassionate. He's very empathic, empathetic. He's very caring and devotional and loving. Look at how he's stroking her head, her hair. And he's a king. He's a king, so he sits in it. And he is one of those kings where if it's emotionally turbulent, it's not going to rock him. He knows how to contain his emotions. He's aware of his emotions. He's comfortable with his emotions. And he's comfortable with other people's emotions. Um, he's very adept at the emotional, in the emotional realm. This is how you're perceiving this connection in November. I get the sense that you see them that way. Like they are very emotionally mature, intelligent, wise, and that you are potentially projecting some romantic idealizations or fantasies upon this connection that are not not necessarily grounded in the reality of what a relationship actually is. Somebody is doing that. There's an energy of that happening, whether it's you or them. Queen of Wands, how do they see you? How are they seeing this connection? You notice the Queen of Wands has a single black cat sitting right in front of her. That's her familiar. She's holding a sunflower. Very fiery, very sunny. This is how they're perceiving your connection in November. Ace of Wands, well, that makes sense. A new beginning, a new fiery, passionate, creative beginning. They feel very comfortable with it. See those two figures in the fireplace standing inside of the fire? Passion. 
They want that inside of any connection that they have, romantic, sexual connection, there must be passion for the Queen of Wands. It's more about passion for the Queen of Wands than it is for the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pen Pentacles might be looking for stability and security and like, hey, are you solid? Are you solid? Um, the Queen of Wands is like, no, I want the, I want that spark and it's got to be like intense. So they're perceiving this connection as a new beginning. There definitely is a connection happening here and they like that it's passionate. They need it to be passionate. They perceive it as passionate. All right. Now let's get into the moon, the composite energies. <clears throat> Ooh, we have two fives here. Five of wands just showed up. Something is hidden, my friend. Pisces, something is hidden. There is a third party situation here, a third influence. I don't know if it's another person or another relationship that's hidden from view, um, or if it's just the energy of another relationship that's past, but it's still lingering, But or if it's a hurt that's happened in the past. Somebody feels deceived, manipulated, betrayed in some way. There's an energy of going outside of the relationship to connect with another person. And they might think that it's hidden, but this third person is fully aware of it. Now, there is something that's hidden about this here. When you come together, there's something that's not, all the information is not available. Something that's not quite seen, hasn't been brought to the light of day. There's a five of wands, and it does seem to involve a third influence or a third party situation. Some element of betrayal, manipulation, deception. All right, let's clarify the insight, which is the Knight of Pentacles. Oh, wow, that flipped right out. Ooh, Three of Swords. Okay, yes. Some sort of betrayal. The Three of Swords in the traditional deck is that, you know, beautiful big red heart with all of the, the three swords stabbing it. It is a sense of betrayal. Oh, this is wicked, dude. Check this out. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that witch. She's like practicing some sort of magic. It's like a, she, this woman here is thriving in ecstasy. He's pushing her legs apart and playing some music. And there's like a witch in the background practicing some sort of magic. Dude, that is, that's like intense imagery. This is like sex magic, but also... I almost get the sense that these two, the harp player and the uh, woman in the background, are in cahoots to make this woman in the foreground vulnerable in some way so that they can take advantage of her. Yikes. That's clarifying. The Three of Swords clarifying the Knight of Pentacles. Move slow, my friend. Pisces, in November, take your time. I do get a sense that somebody's sense of reality is clouded by romantic fantasy. Somebody's perceiving the king of wands or the queen of wands as a king of, what is this? Sorry, king of chalices, king of cups. So not quite seeing exactly who they are there might be elements of them that are that definitely feel like a king of cups energy compassionate emotionally intelligent um empathetic kingly the queen and the king are on the same status essentially um but understand that the person that you're connecting with is first and foremost an energetic archetypal witch who knows how to use her energy and will use it well. And her first and foremost priority is to be motivated and to experience this passion, this sexual passion. 
there does seem to be when you come together something hidden, something that you don't know, something that's not seen at this moment that has to do with a third party situation or a third influence. Look at both of these cards. One, two, three. One, two, three. Practicing some sort of spell. Look how he's holding that single wand. I got the Ace of Wands here. All right. And then we have, like I said, the Five of Wands, no, the Three of Swords clarifying the Knight of Pentacles. So this here is telling me to tell you to take your time where this connection is concerned and really, really pay attention to what's actually happening. Let's clarify some more. All right. What is actually happening here? <laughs> what is this moon um, energy? What is this third party energy? What is this deception manipulation? What does it have to do with? Um, mm. Two of wands. So much wands energy here. Making a choice. Looking out. It's like you've... You've decided on something, and now you're about to implement your plan. You're in the planning strategic phase, and you're looking out, and you're like, okay, I'm going to create this plan. What is actually possible here? It is a purview of all of the possibility. Look at he's holding the world in his hand. What is possible? Looking out into the future out into the future. Sometimes it does suggest world travel, traveling somewhere far. Um, that is to clarify the third party situation and the, the moon, right? Let's keep going. Clarify that a little bit further. Yeah, there's a illusory quality when it comes to your energies combining and the insight of the relationship. This is a card of fantasy and illusion and having many options that you could pursue. What is possible? What is possible? What is the potential? Many options that you can pursue, but none of them that you see very clearly at this point. Fantasies, illusions. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep clarifying this third party situation. And also the moon, what's not seen. What does Pisces need to know about this connection? What needs to be revealed to Pisces about this connection? What would serve them to know about this connection in November? Pisces, here we go. Ooh, you're going to need strength. You're going to need strength. And this card speaks to taming those baser instincts. So when we speak about baser instincts, sometimes we talk about those emotional drivers that motiv motivate us to take action. Baser instincts could also include, you know, like your passion your sex drive, your libido, your kundalini energy, taming those baser instincts. Tapping into universal energy in order to do that. I really get the sense that somebody needs to drop the illusion, drop the fantasy or unpack the romantic fantasy and be very conscious of how they're using their libido or how their libido might be driving them or motivating them at this time, because not everything is seen about this connection. We have the Seven of Cups. We have the Two of Wands. We have the Moon. Uh, what, we ha what has been revealed to us in this reading is that there is some sort of third influence happening here, <clears throat> where it comes to you two coming together and also the insight of the connection. And we have this card of advice that's saying, hey, take your time with this. 
if you want something that's going to last or be long lasting, then you need to practice patience, tame your baser instincts, maybe don't jump into bed right away so that you can understand this connection with the clear head. They want some sex right off the bat. They're like, let's do this. Let's jump in that fire. Um, all right. Let us pull. Let's pull a medicine card. I want a card of advice for you, Pisces, as you navigate this connection in November. This is hot and spicy, but it's not, it's not without complication. That's for sure. Not all the information is available. There's something that... There's something hidden. Maybe one or the other of you is involved in another relationship, another connection. See, now I love these cards, but they are too long for my hands. So sometimes they take a little while to pull. A card of advice for Pisces, please, as they move through November. I'm not going to pull that card. It's bent, so it comes up consistently. It was grouse. It was, grouse is about movement. Um, paying attention to how you move, aligning your intention with your action so that you can um, act in ways that really serve you, serve your intention. Hummingbird. 44. Okay, Pisces, if this reading is resonating with you, please hit the like button. Also subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends. Um, and if you're interested in a personalized reading, there's a link below. I would love to read for you. Let's read though about Hummingbird. This is your card of guidance for November and Hummingbird is about joy. If hummingbird is your personal medicine, you love life and its joys. Your presence bring joy, brings joy to others. You join people together in relationships which bring out the best in them. You know instinctively where beauty abides and near or far, you journey to your ideal. You move comfortably within a beautiful environment. It says near or far, you journey to your ideal. Didn't I say world travel, near or far, you journey? World travel. Also observing this observation. Um, yeah, that just came up for me. You move comfortably within a beautiful environment and help others taste the succulent nectar of life. That might be why this queen, queen of wands is so attracted to you. There's something about like the sensorial that is connected to, I mean, obviously, it's connected to passion. It's connected to sex. It has everything to do with your senses. Hummingbird holds the bow of beauty, which is delicately inlaid with gold and silver flowers, pearls, and precious jewels. Hummingbird disdains ugliness or harshness and quickly flies away from discord or disharmony. If Hummingbird has flown into your cards, get ready to laugh musically and enjoy creator's many gifts. Drop your judgmental attitude and relax. Hummingbird will no doubt give you a flash of the spirit darting here, there, and everywhere. Get ready for a strange new burst of energy which may send your senses reeling. Yeah, Ace of Wands. A strange new burst of energy that may send your senses reeling. Yeah. <laughs> Hummingbird hears celestial music and is in harmony with it. Hummingbird may invite you to an art museum or a concert. Hummingbird energetically embraces the highest aesthetics. Never be coarse in front of Hummingbird, for this is a fragile medicine which may have no understanding of worldly affairs. Beauty is the target, and Hummingbird's mission is to spread joy or be destroyed. Spread joy or be destroyed. Hummingbird quickly dies if caged, caught, or imprisoned. Follow Sister Hummingbird, and you will soon be filled with paroxysms of joy and experience a renewal of the magic of living. Oh, yeah, I feel like that's definitely in store for you here. <laughs> She's all about experiencing the magic of living. 
right? And she's got this Ace of Wands clarifying her and how she sees this connection as this fiery, passionate, creative new beginning. Very sensorial, very erotic. Um, I don't know if your your partner is the hummingbird or you're the hummingbird or, or what, but hopefully that had a special message for you. Pisces, wow. There's this like temptation here in this reading um, wanting to give in to that passion, wanting to give into that kundalini energy, that energy of your libido. Like, I want to have this, like, spark. I want to experience the magic of life. I want all of my senses to be engaged with this. Um, and this energy of, like, hey, but you should probably tame your baser instincts. You should, like, get in control of your libido at this moment because there's something that you are not seeing about this connection. So it's like this push and pull this real temptation to just dive in and like experience this erotic delight that this person or connection represents. And also this warning, like, Hey, <laughs> there's a lot of fantasy happening here. There's a lot of illusion surrounding this. There's a third influence at play. You might want to take it slow and really observe with clarity who this person is, and what this connection is about. All right, Pisces. I'm wishing you the best in November. Take really good care.